right-handed will be Eskridge and Clark deep. Eskridge on the left, Clark on the right, the run-up. Here's the ball, punched high in the air. It will come down just short of the goal line. It will be Eskridge at the 2, to the 5, the 10. 15 in the middle of the field, 20. Goes to the 22-yard line, and down he goes at the 22-yard line. Leading the way was Roosevelt Noble for Washington State, and also there for the Cougars, linebacker to now Alapate, and the ball is on the 22-yard line, first down and 10 for San Jose State. Cougars defensively have Marvin Adams, Mark Ledbetter, John Savage, Ivan Cook up front. Cook was the defensive lineman of the week last week against UNLV. From the 22 in an eye formation, motion through by Mala Ulu to the right, pitch back now to the tailback. Jackson running left, being pursued, being hit, and down he goes at the 25-yard line. Ivan Cook with excellent pursuit from the defensive line and linebacker, the stub or strong linebacker, Maury Metcalf, a 6'2", 222-pound sophomore from Sacramento, also there, and a three-yard pickup out to the 25, it'll be down and seven. Here's motion through the backfield. One running back now for San Jose State. Three wide men out. Back to pass. Short drop. Here's the throw. Perez up to the 30. Caught by Malaulu and out of bounds at the 31. A yard short of a first down. And run out of play there by Sean Landrum, the cornerback for Washington State at the 31-yard line. A tight wing right. An eye formation in the backfield and two tight ends. Here's the pitch back. High pitch to Jackson. Tries the right side. Got the first down on an excellent recovery. Two men split right. One to the left. Jackson the running back. Back goes Perez. Sets up deep now. Here comes the rush from the outside. Throws upfield. Incomplete. That ball over the head of his intended receiver and almost picked off by left cornerback Ricky Reynolds. And uh, Eskridge to the right. They'll put a uh, slot man to the right. The handoff to Jackson. Penalty markers down. They blew the play dead before it started. The referee was waving his arms over his head to call the play off before they ever got the really running full speed. And so they're going to call a dead ball, ball illegal procedure against San Jose State. Somebody in that offensive line must have jumped and it'll be a walk-off against the Spartans now as they'll bring it back from the 33 to about the 28-yard line. Out over the ball at center now, Tim Stasekola, 269-pound senior from Modesto, California. Two men to the right, one to the left, Jackson in the backfield. Back goes Perez, the quarterback sets up deep. Being chased out of the pocket, got away. He's up to the 30, running to the right, tripped up on a good shoestring tackle that time. And the man who got him for Washington State, the count struck again, Dean Terulia, and he brought him down at about the 31-yard line. Terulia on an excellent tackle. Excellent individual tackle. He was out there all by himself. Perez had some running room, but good pressure by the Cougar defensive line that time. They really forced Perez out of the pocket. He stepped up into the cup, tried to make something happen. Excellent coverage by the Cougar secondary, and he only picked up a couple yards. Nice play. Three-yard gain makes it third down and 12 at the 31. Ball on the right hash mark. Open side to the left side. Lions to the right now. Malaulu will go to the left side. Eskridge to the right, and they'll put a slot man to the right side as well. Kenny Nash. Signals called. Nash goes at motion through to the left side. Perez, the quarterback with the ball, drops straight back, rush from the outside, throws deep on the left side. It is dropped by Nash. He was down on the Cougar 41-yard line. The ball was there, but it went through the hands of Kenny Nash, the wide receiver who had gone in motion. He simply did not handle the ball in his fourth down. Well, I'll tell you, that time uh, San Jose State just ran a trips formation to the left side. The inside receiver just ran down and ran a seam pattern and then cut it back out to the corner. He was wide open. He got between the corner and the safety. A nice pass by Perez. He just could not hold on. Here's where San Jose got in trouble against Oregon. Tom Deal back to punt and uh, David Diaz in fatty to snap. Good snap back. Here's the kick away. Good high spiraling kick downfield. Taylor backing up to his own 20-yard line to take that ball. Starts up the middle. Broke the first wave. 30. 35 and is tripped up as he got to the 35-yard line and bounced across the 35-yard line. And the man who got down there to get him for San Jose State was Ryan Rasnick, a defensive back who made the tackle. All right. Cougars ready. It's Blunt at quarterback, split backs behind him. Here's the handoff, fake to Porter. Blunt going to roll to the right side, or to the corner, throws the ball upfield. It is caught, tight end, got it. Ball is caught by Chris Leighton over midfield and down to the 40-yard line. Chris Leighton, who was banged up a bit in last week's game, and Blunt just rolled out to the right side, ran away from everybody to the corner, and threw the ball. Leighton caught it. They're going to put it down at the 39-yard line. At the other end of the field, a 24-yard passing gain for Washington State and a first down. So the Cougars immediately go to the air on their first play of the game. First down 10, no score, we're early in the first quarter. Here's Blunt running left, pitch back, Broussard around the left side, Porter blocking. He broke a tackle, he's over the 35 and out of bounds at the 31-yard line. 
Steve Broussard, the bruiser, the kid who's built like a bowling ball with legs, just ripped around the left side, broke out of a tackle, and rolled it down to the 31. Over the ball at center now, Alan Boatman, the snap, the fake pitch to the left, running right, rolling the ball, goes blunt, throws downfield, leaping try by Chase, batted away, intercepted, ball picked off by John King up the left sidelines, 50, 40, down to the 35, the 30, still battling, retreats a bit, and down he goes at the Washington State 32-yard line. Cornerback John King, a senior from San Diego, picked it off. The ball intended for Chase. Rick went up in the air, was hit as the ball arrived. It spun away from him, and King grabbed the ball out of the air and took off. Boy, that's just great individual play by that defensive back that time. He had good coverage there, and man-for-man -man coverage that time. The ball's a little bit behind Chase that time, but what happened is King came in and punished him. The ball scored straight up in the air. He picks it off and nearly breaks it all the way. Went close to 40 yards, well. and Paul, if memory serves, that is the first Cougar turnover of 1986. Sure is. They didn't have one last week. Eye formation now at the 31 and a half yard line of Washington State. Left hash mark. Here's the pitch now to King running into the sidelines on the left. He's hit at the 30. Falls forward down around the 28 or 29 yard line as the Cougars ganged up on him that time and rode him down. Ronnie Collins was there. Maury Metcalf was there for Washington State as they uh, went in and so was Brian Ford, the middle linebacker. They'll put the ball down at about the 28 yard line. So a gain on the play of three yards. Second down and seven for San Jose State. Washington State really worked on the sweep this week. They were very conscious of getting a bunch of players over there. That time there were four or five players around the pile. Did a nice job of knocking them down. So it's second down seven. They're still on the left hash mark. Now split running backs. Two men out to the right. Hand off to King slanting off the left side down near the 25 yard line. Metcalf on top of the pile. And I'll tell you Jim Walden said he was not happy with that position. Brian Ford was also in the stack at the bottom. And so was Terulia. So all the linebackers were there. He was not happy with that linebacker position. He's getting good play from it so far in this game. Ball just outside the 25-yard line on the left hash mark. Third down, a long three to go. Two backs split in the backfield. Three receivers out. Pitch right now to King. Had to wait up for the ball. Tripped up. Falls forward down to the 25-yard line. Sergio Oliveras is in to try the kick with Mike Perez, the quarterback, to hold. They will spot the ball at the 32-yard line on the right hash. It'll be a 42-yard field goal attempt from the right angle. Here's the snap. The ball spotted. Here's the kick. Blocked. Ricky Reynolds blocked it. Ball loose at the 40. Still rolling loose. Picked up by Collins, but he falls on it at about the 45-yard line of San Jose State. Ronnie Collins fell on the ball as Ricky Reynolds blocked it. He came through unmolested and got to that ball to block it. That speed all the way. All he did is come right in off the right side that time, and he just laid his body out there, got both hands on it, had about eight Cougars who had a chance to pick it up. Collins finally bounces on it, and he seems to have a chance to get in and be in the right place at the right time. Nice job by the WSU defense. Well, they lost 29 yards on that play on the block kick, so they're in minus yardage on offense now, and the Cougars once again have the football ready to go to work. Alan Boatman over the ball at center. Snap blunt with the ball rolls right. Throws the ball to the right side. Caught by Chase at the 40 down to the 38 yard line. Rick Chase on the reception. Finally run down by Greg Cox, the rover out of Columbus, Ohio who's probably glad he didn't stay at home to play college football the way things are going in Seattle this afternoon. Boy, the way the Huskies are hammering on Ohio State right now, I don't think anybody wants to claim that. Nice play that time by, by Chase. He ran the same exact route that was intercepted earlier. Blunt this time threw the ball, hit him right in the hands. Nice reception. I think good call coming right back to him like that. Too. All right, Cougars ready. Blunt with one running back behind him, two men left. Pitch back, Kerry Porter running right, puts his head down, fights for the first down, down to the 34-yard line. Porter picks up four on his first carry, and that should be good for a Washington State first down. As Kerry Porter carries, it is the second Cougar first down of the game. And with exactly nine minutes remaining to play in the first quarter, the score is still nothing-nothing, but the Cougars at the 34-yard line of San Jose State have a first down 10. Crank up the clock, says the referee. We're ready to go. Ball is on the right hash mark. They have sidelines to the right. Cotton Sears will split to that side with Chase as a slot. And the tight end will be to the left. Split backs behind Blunt. Broussard and Porter in the backfield. Long count now. Might be checking off with a snap. Hand off to Porter. Carey slants off the right side. That is just vintage Veer that time as he carried the ball to the right side and picked up perhaps a yard, maybe two, as he just drove ahead. And then they rolled him back by sheer weight of numbers. Second down and a long eight. He gained about a yard and a half, yard and three quarters. Over the ball, Boatman again from Kettle Falls. Two men split left. Trips left. Now rolling left. Goes uh, Blunt being run out of the pocket, ducked away, flagged down downfield, throw to Leighton, caught it at the 25-yard line, but there's a flag down. They mark Leighton down at the 17, but there's a flag down in the secondary. Now it's been picked up 
So let's see what that is. They're going to bring it way back near the line of scrimmage and put it down. That flag did not land where the official intended, but apparently, according to Victor Wood at least, it's going to be against San Jose State. I'll tell you, the person that made that play was Ed Blunt. He had San Jose State defenders all over him. It's holding. It looked like it bit man. He'd been on the defense. He held Blunt. Blunt up a little bit. Split backs with two men to the right side, tight end to the left. Signals called. Blunt with the ball to Porter. Bangs in on the right side down to the 15-yard line goes Kerry Porter. And the linebacker, Yuppie Pau made the tackle on the play. <laughs> One running back now, Broussard, as Porter has gone out. Three receivers, Blunt. Pitch, Broussard running right. Slipped the tackle. 15-10 puts his head down and drives to the sidelines. It is Steve Broussard with Victor Wood blocking out in front. And also out in front, Tim Stallworth. So the Cougars getting good downfield performance from the wide receivers blocking. Boy, he just made Barry Kidney the inside linebacker just looked bad because Broussard came up there, kind of gave him one of those little hip jukes, and Kenny just went right down to his knees. That was all Broussard that time. He just got right to the outside and used his speed to pick up those five yards. Now you got another good name, Barry Kidney, the linebacker. You know what he's majoring in? <laughs> biology. Anatomy. Now, biology. Okay. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Barry Kidney in the biology class. All right, power eye now. The wishbone formation, in fact, for the Cougars. They're in the bone for the first time. Handoff given to the fullback. Straight up, Kerry Porter fighting trying to get the first down as he brought it right up the middle and I think only got about a yard as he came out of the wishbone that time and drove straight ahead. Kerry Porter on the carry. The tackle made by Mace Goldsby. The ball will be spotted now at about the 16-yard line, 16 and a half. It comes back low. The ball of the tee is kicked end over end. It is no good. It is wide to the right as the snap came back low that time and Ed Blunt had a little trouble getting it on the tee for Adams and the ball was kicked high and wide. Kenny Jackson carried to the left side for nothing. Stopped at the 20-yard line. Second down, 10. Here's the fake. Back to pass goes Perez. Throws over the middle. That ball is caught at the 40-yard line. And Terulia makes the tackle there on the receiver who caught the ball up at the 40-yard line. The receiver was Guy Liggins for San Jose State. That's good for 20 yards and a first down. So the San Jose State Spartans pick up 20 yards on their second pass completion in four attempts and their first for a first down. They ran Jackson, then they passed to Kenny Liggins, to Guy Liggins. Liggins just ran right down the middle. He turned in. Good seam pattern. He was able to get between the linebacker and the safety. A nice pass by Perez. He threw it in there with some mustard. All right, the Cougars are ready now. They've moved Savage almost over the uh, center in that odd man spacing on the line. Back to pass goes the quarterback. Throws right side. That ball caught by Eskridge at the 50. Down to the Cougar 45-yard line goes Eskridge, and he is bumped and knocked back on the play as Metcalf finally got there to make the tackle for Washington State. They'll put him down just shy of the Cougar 45. Another 15-yard gain. It's all set again. Mike Perez, the quarterback. The snap. The fake draw. Back he goes deep to pass. Sets up. Wants to throw long. Now he's going to run out to the right. Now he throws. The ball is caught on a diving comeback effort. That ball by Liggins down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. It was Guy Liggins who played well last week, was banged up and wasn't even listed on the two deeps coming into the ballgame this afternoon, but showed up in uniform and has made two good catches on this drive. Ball down to the Cougar 18. That's a 27-yard forward pass play. And another San Jose first down. They're four for six. Three of them for first downs. Three straight in a row, too. Three straight completions, three straight first downs. Out of the huddle they come once again. Nothing, nothing. Tim, uh, Tim Stasekel over the ball at center. Tight end to the left. Motion. Liggins through to the left side. They have two receivers left, one right. Back to pass again. Here's Perez to the right side and he overthrew his receiver that time the ball was high and away from the intended receiver Stephen Crawford who had been set out to the right side went down toward the pylon and turned out so the Spartans finally miss on one and it becomes second down and 10 at the Washington State 18. Ronnie Collins right up on the end of the line playing over air on the open side the weak side now signals call there is no tight end the Cougars showing blitz now by two of the linebackers Terulia and Ford long count two receivers left and now they've taken too much time so the linebackers showing blitz and backing off have caused the uh, San Jose State Spartans to try and change their play at the line, and it cost them five yards back to the 23-yard line for delay. Here's San Jose State at the 23-yard line of Washington State right hash mark. Split running backs. Running right, Perez hit, got the ball away to Jackson. It's on the ground, and I think is finally covered there by James Saxon, the fullback for San Jose State. But the quarterback... 
Perez, as he rolled out, was hit. He tried to pitch back to Kenny Jackson. Reynolds up from the secondary, rotating up, made a hit there. The ball flew loose, but finally James Saxon, a junior from Sacramento, made the recovery on the 25. It's a two-yard loss on the play for the San Jose State Spartans, and they come now to third down, back at the 25-yard line, third down and 17 yards to go. The nice thing about having five defensive backs in there is you can do some blitzing and some stunting. I wouldn't be surprised if they sent a couple of bodies here. Holmes and Collins are right up on the line of scrimmage for the Cougars with two inside backers back to go past Perez. Throws over the middle. Got it underneath that time as he hits Saxon. Saxon down to about the 11-yard line. The little fullback just circled out of the backfield, got underneath the coverage, Paul, and caught that ball with a lot of running room and took it down to the 11-yard line. That was just a zone defense for Washington State. They were dropping off, trying to deny the big pass into the end zone. Saxon just scooted right out of the backfield. He was wide open across the middle. Perez saw him, but it comes up a little bit short. Fourth and three. Fourth down three. Ball right out in front of the goalpost in San Jose State with 224 and counting to go in the first quarter. We'll try to get on the board first. Sergio Oliveira is the little 5'8", 155-pound junior in the kick. Mike Perez will hold the ball. He'll spot it at the 17-yard line. 27-yard attempt straight on. Snap back, spot, and Rush Reynolds blocked it again. Laid straight out. Reynolds blocked it. Collins tried to pick it up. Lost it. It's rolling loose. Reynolds has it now at the 20-yard line at the sidelines across the way. And the Cougars have blocked a second field goal. And Ron Collins saw 80 yards of touchdown <laughs> ahead of him when he tried to pick that one up. Well, I'll tell you, the hero or the stud muffin, if you want to call him right now, is the Ricky what? Reynolds. The what? <laughs> <laughs> he came in that time from the lower part of your screen. What am I saying? We're not even on television. The lower part of your of the field here on the left side, came in laid out, blocked his second field goal in the game. Collins almost picked it up, but unfortunately kind of mumbled that one and fell out of bounds. Is a stud muffin look sort of like a killer tomato? Yeah, it is. It's, uh, oh, it's a new man. word, Bob. This is the 80s Oh, now. my goodness gracious. I must be getting old. <laughs> Here's the wishbone now for the Cougars tight end right and the split man Rick Chase out to the left. Blunt with the ball to Porter. The front man, the fullback, drives it straight up the middle. He's over the 25 and takes the ball out to about the 27-yard line. So on the first carry, about a five-yard pickup. They started on the 22-yard line and Kerry Porter takes it out to the 27. That's a five-yard gain for Kerry who, by the way, I, I said I would mention this. Kerry is playing today wearing equipment manager Jack Trimble's wristband. So wherever the ball goes in possession of Kerry Porter, Jack Trimble's wristband will lead. And he'll get excellent service when he, if he ever breaks any equipment. I well, promise. I'll tell you, he will if that wristband wins a football game. From the bone again, handoff once again to Kerry Porter, slants to the left side, but there's not much there. As San Jose State read that one well, they had a lot of people up on the front. When the Cougars went to the wishbone, they got the eight-man front built in a hurry, and there were just no gaps, and Kerry on sheer strength picked up a yard. San Jose State, it is tough to run the middle because Goldsby is 278, only 6-1 in the middle. He's a you talk about stumps. He's just a stump in there in the middle. And then they have the two quick inside linebackers. Here's the snap. Back goes Blunt now. Throws right side. It's incomplete. But flags go flying. We've got interference. It was intended for Kittrick <laughs> Tracy Clark. Wrapped him up as a Christmas gift long before time for delivery that time. And was ready to ship him. And the flags are down all over the field. Boy, we saw flags in the field. I saw hot dog wrappers flying out there. I mean, there was more things to let people know. There was pass interference. <laughs> that wasn't even close. <laughs> all right. Here's Cotton Sears wide left now. Tight end is to the right. Leighton in the wishbone. Here's the handoff fake to Porter. Running left is Blunt around the corner and got to about the 44-yard line. Couple of yard gain. Ed Blunt on the carry for Washington State and Wayne Woodard, a 241-pound 6'4 senior defensive end in that three-man front out of Jackson, California, made the tackle. Two-yard gain. Gilbert was very concerned about running against this option team. They don't play anybody that runs the option in the PC2A, but so far San Jose State has done an excellent job of defending the run. Claude Gilbert, I guess you probably know, was on the San Jose State team that came up here and played in that blizzard when almost nobody came, but he didn't make the trip. He stayed home. Here's Blunt with the ball, handing off again to the fullback Porter, fighting his way. He's over the 45 this time, but not getting much out of the wishbone. And the Cougars have gone extremely conservative in the middle now in their ground attack. They have stopped splitting the backs. They've been running in the wishbone, and time has now run out in the first quarter of the ball game as Kerry Porter got the ball out to the 46-yard line, a two-yard advance, and that's where the scoreless first quarter will come to an end. The end of the first period is the Cougars want to come out of the huddle and go. Now, let's just be sure there is not another play here. Uh, they, the scoreboard clock says nothing, and the officials are going to make the change. So that is the end of the first quarter here at Martin Stadium with the score, Washington State nothing, San Jose State nothing. <laughs> Well, they put the ball on the 45, not the 46, and so it is a uh, one-yard gain, not two, as the uh, 
quarter came to an end, and it's third down for Washington State now. Cougar, I'll call it the 46. That's close enough. Signals called now with Boatman over the ball, and uh, running back staggered in the backfield. Back goes Blunt to pass. Sets up. Throws deep. Left side. Kittrick Taylor just out of his reach, down deep at the 10-yard line on the sidelines. Taylor running full out the fly pattern, and Casey Clark, the little 5'9 cornerback, Paul, went with him stride for stride. Well, I tell you, Casey Clark is a great football player. He's got the excellent quickness that time. Uh, Taylor came out of the backfield and just looped it, ran right down the sidelines. Clark was with him. Blunt did an excellent job of leading Kittrick, but it was just a little bit too far. So the Cougars in a fourth down situation, and in to do the kicking will be uh, Doug Wellsamp, the big tight end out of Ritzville. He's back now to take the snap. Here's the ball back. Here's the kick away. He gets up a high floater angling from the far side. Fair catch signaled and made back at the 20-yard line that time. The fair catch made by Casey Clark. And so the ball goes over to the San Jose State Spartans. They will take it at their own 20-yard line. All right, now it's a, uh, a staggered eye in the backfield. Here's a pitch to the tailback. That is Jackson running right. Broke a tackle, hurtling around the right side. Brian Ford got him at the 23-yard line. Middle linebacker Brian Ford, the big kid from Montreal, Saint Laurent, Quebec, reading well and pursuing well that time to make the tackle for Washington State. And on forward progress, they'll put that ball down on the 24-yard line. So for Kenny Jackson, a four-yard advance, second down and six with the ball on the right hash mark. San Jose State out of the huddle now. Nothing, nothing as we've just started the second quarter. I formation, wide receivers to both sides. Perez with the ball, fakes to the tailback, drops back on play action, throws over the middle, leaping catch that time by Mala Ulu. And he went down at the 43-yard line. An excellent leaping catch, two-handed up over his blue helmet. He caught that ball and hit the turf, coming down at the 43 for a 19-yard gain for Mala Ulu on the pass play and another first down. That time Mala Ulu lined up on the inside. He was awfully tight. He just ran down, ran a drag, run. Ronnie Collins was right on him. Excellent pass by Perez. He, I tell you, Malulu has good leaping ability for a little guy. He really got up there. He's only 5'8", 185. Now split backs. Two men split left, one right, no tight end for San Jose, and a long count. Quarterback Perez checking off the uh, defense now. Takes the snap. Back he goes. No fake. Throws right side. That ball is caught again and then knocked away from Malaulu. The Cougars have it. Nope, they say it's an incomplete pass. They're ruling it incomplete as Ricky Reynolds came up with the ball. But the back judge coming up to meet the play says, no, that ball was never held. That was never in possession. Well, it's the same old story. Does he have the possession with it? If he did, Ricky Reynolds did a great job. He came in and stripped the ball away. That's a Washington State fumble recovery. If he didn't, whatever it goes as an incomplete pass. I'll tell you, it, it looks pretty close. On the replay, it looks like he has a, a chance. He takes a couple of steps with that. Ricky comes in, strips the ball. That's a Cougar turnover. So it's a matter of whether he ever had a firm grasp on the ball or not. Three receivers, one running back. Tight end to the left side. Jackson, the tailback, the lone running back behind Perez, the quarterback for San Jose State on second down and 10 at their own 43-yard line. Signals called now with a snap. Perez drops back, throws left side, has a man out there to catch the ball. He does. It is Guy Liggins run to the sidelines over midfield at the Washington State 47. Ron Collins finally ran him down. He stayed inbounds at the 47 of Washington State. So, again, on that play of 10 yards and enough for a first down. So, first down passing for San Jose State. They are 7 for 11 with five first downs in this nothing-nothing first half. Perez is doing a nice thing. He's just picking away at the Cougars. That time he saw Blitz. He audibled off the line of scrimmage. Lingens just ran a quick little sprint out or five-yard out route. Collins was trying to chase, and the ball was right there. Completion first down, San Jose State. Well, Perez did throw a lot underneath against Oregon last week with great success, and he's done that against the Cougars here as well. Now with one running back behind him, he'll give the ball this time on a reverse, rolling to the right side. Lingens to throw. His throw is blocked by Cougars. Rulia intercepted by Ford at the line of scrimmage. Broke a tackle over the 50, 45, 41-yard line. Dean Tarulia blocked the reverse flanker pass. Batted it way up in the air, and Brian Ford caught it coming down for the interception. That's some kind of a combination. That's an old Washington State Jim Walden play. That's a, a tailback or a, full, a flanker reverse pass that time. He was going to pass the ball to Malaulu, who was running down the sidelines, but Terulio came in there and crushed it, and the ball goes straight up in the air. It almost looked like a punt. Ford just waited for it, fair caught it, and ran down the sidelines. <laughs> he could have been play. a fair catch on that. Defense is hot today, I'll tell you right now. Uh, ball's on the 40-yard line on the left hash mark now. Ed Blunt with a team in 
a wishbone formation. Ed Tingstad is the third running back in. The handoff fake. Blunt fakes the pitch, turns the corner, trying to get some ground, and uh, got across the 40, and down goes a flag. Now I think we've got a face mask. Eddie Blunt on the ground in the grasp that time of defensive lineman Mark Dean. And then we got the face mask called as well. So Blunt will pick up a couple of yards on the run from the uh, 40 down to the 38-yard line. And then on top of that will come the 15-yard face mask foul. It'll take the ball down to around the 23-yard line. So the walk-off against San Jose State, and the Cougars get their second first down of the game with Alan Boatman at center. Blunt with one running back behind him. Chase in motion right to left through the formation. Time called. He doesn't like what he saw as the defensive man of the secondary went with Rick Chase that time. Ryan Rasnick, Kittrick Taylor out to the right. Porter in the backfield. Blunt running right. Pitch to Porter, round the corner, at the 20, slips a tackle and dives near the 21-yard line. Kerry Porter on the carry that time, finally grabbed around the ankles by Yippie Pau'u, and there to cover was Casey Clark, and they'll put him down perhaps at around the 22-yard, uh, check it, at the 17-yard line. So Kerry Porter at the 17 picks up six on the play. And for the Cougars, it'll be second down and four yards to go. That was just a nice audible at that time, or a nice play that time by Blunt. He came down again, optioned the end, pitched it back to Porter. Good blocking by the Cougar wide receivers down the field to allow him to get down there and pick up the six-yard game. Blunt really puts a lot of pressure on a defensive oh, man does. on that side. Yes, it's I mean, great speed, too. <laughs> and strong. Now Victor Wood is in as a slot inside out the right for the Cougars. Michael James out to the right. There's Blunt throwing left side. Caught by Leighton on a deflection at the 10, down to the five-yard line. They'll put him down maybe at the six, but that was a great catch by Chris Leighton. That ball, Paul, was deflected, and Leighton kept his eye on it and just looked it right into his hands. That's a third big key catch for Leighton in this ball game. Blunt did a great job. He rolled to his left, threw the ball out there. Nice defensive play by the San Jose State linebacker. I couldn't tell who it was, but Leighton showing good concentration, pulled it in, picked up the first down. The ball's on the six yard. Well, they're going to put it nearer the five at the five and a half on the left hash mark, so okay, a 12 five, yard gain on the play. Signals called now. Cougars spread the field again. Two men short side left, one man wide to the right. Kittrick Taylor. It is Broussard in the running backfield. Here's Blunt running right. Pitch to Broussard. Had to wait for the ball, but he's running right at the five. Tried to stiff arm. He's caught and dragged back on the play. So Steve Broussard lost maybe a yard on the play as Clark got there to make the uh, initial contact, and then Pau'u came up to help out. I don't want to say that the officials missed the call there, but uh, Broussard's walking off the field with his face mask in his hand. I mean, it looked like he almost decapitated the man. It was unbelievable. A one-yard loss back to the six-yard line, six and a half on the right hash mark, and so it'll be the Cougars now second down and goal to go from the just outside the six-yard line. Here comes Tingstad, here comes Porter, so the Cougars may be going back into uh, the wishbone, although I think Broussard went out. That was where a little bit of inexperience showed. Had Broussard been able to cut the ball back up inside, he would have got it awfully close down to the goal line. Now well, Broussard is in, and they are in the bone now, with Taylor out to the short side right and the tight end late and left. Here's the handoff. Broussard dives into the middle, got it down to the five-yard line, and is grabbed around the ankles and held there. So it was Steve Broussard from Los Angeles Manual Arts High School tried to carry that ball in the middle, got only down to the five for about a one-yard gain, perhaps a little more than that. But they'll put the ball right at the five, and the Cougars are now third and goal at the five on the right hash mark with no score in the game. With Kittrick Taylor coming into the ball game, this is not a bad situation for uh, a little Valenta Taylor corner pattern. Just throw the ball up there, let Kittrick run underneath that or whoever's out there and see if he can outbeat, beat, outjump that corner for the touchdown. Stallworth wide left, Victor Wood wide right, James, Michael James slot right, but he'll go in motion back to the left side, late and tight end left. Here's the roll left by Ed Blunt, throw to the end zone, underthrown. Intended for Michael James and a penalty marker is down at the five yard line. So there's a flag down, and let's see what the call is now, whether it was a lineman got across too far or whether somebody was holding on to somebody at the far side. The call made at the far side of the field, and the referee will give us the signal now. He says it was an ineligible Cougar lineman got across the line of scrimmage. Blunt, they'll spot the ball at the 12-yard line just inside the right hash. A 22-yard attempt. Here's the snap back on the tee. The kick is up. It is low. It hit on top of the crossbar and went through. <laughs> It hit right at the junction of the gooseneck and the crossbar and rolled down the gooseneck and went through. You will never see a field goal closer than that that goes in. 
And so a 22-yard field goal by Kevin Adams. Ready for the kickoff by Nico Brastoff. Here's the run forward and the kick. Gets into it pretty well. Sends it end over end. That's down toward the east end to our right. Ball taken back there by Eskridge now for San Jose State. Up the middle at the 20. Slipped the tackle at the 25. Got to around the 26 or 7-yard line. And is dragged down there. So it was Obrastov's kickoff. And Roosevelt Noble made the tackle on the play for the Cougars special team. That uh, scoring drive was 7 plays, 34 yards. 8 of 3 minutes and 10 seconds resulting in the 22-yard field goal but I'd say Bob we've had some problems on field goals two blocked one bouncing off the crossbar what else is left rain and we're getting that now uh oh it's coming down in torrents and the fans are beginning to scatter for cover now they're getting blankets umbrellas any kind of cover they can and they stage down at the east end for the post game show they're trying to cover that here's the snap Perez hands fakes the handoff rolls right now throws to the right side tipped in the air Reynolds has he got it no it bounced away and out of bounds Ricky Reynolds diving for that ball, tapped it a couple of times, and failed to hold on. So tight end to the left, two receivers to the right, one out to the left, and one running back behind Perez with the ball. Back he goes, sets up deep over the middle, hits his tight end that time, Bill Klump up at the 40-yard line, and Klump will fall to the 41, and 3 nothing Cougars lead. Back to pass goes the quarterback, Perez. Little flare out to the right side, a swing pass caught by Jackson, up over the 45 to the 47 or 8-yard line. Mark him at the 47, I think as he went bouncing forward on the artificial turf here at Martin Stadium after the catch. San Jose State does not play on artificial turf very often, and they have not played very well on it in the past couple of years. They've only, I think, uh, played a couple of games and lost them both, and that pass complete out to the 47-yard line, a six-yard gain. Okay, that was a nice individual effort by Ricky Reynolds. He came up from his cornerback position, dove right through a couple of offensive linemen, and was able to knock Jackson down. Now it will be Lafo Malaulu out to the left side for San Jose State. They've got a wing back right. Here's the handoff. Jackson, the tailback, up the right side. He goes, crosses midfield, and takes the ball down near the Cougar 47-yard line. Jackson on the carry, and the tackle made by Chris Hiller, the defensive end out of Fort Vancouver High School in Vancouver, Washington. Put it back on the 48-yard line. So from the 47 across to the 48, a five-yard advance by Kenny Jackson, the 192-pound tailback, who gained 82 yards last week. And you like this. He gained 82 yards against Oregon. Their net rushing offense was 80. Okay. Okay. Here's the new tailback in, Randy Walker, running the right side. And Walker doesn't get very much as the Cougars stack him up at the line of scrimmage. And leading the way that time was Rob Cleveland. The Cougars, four down linemen on defense. The linebackers on the corners up close. Back to pass goes Perez again. Zone defense. Here's the throw downfield. It is caught and then dropped. Ball in the hands and out. Kenny Nash, the receiver, and was surrounded that time by Washington State Cougars on defense. And uh, Ronnie Lee, I think, was the man who was nearest, along with Artie Holmes. And among them and Jim Hasty, they managed to knock that ball away. Well, I tell you, very impressed with that pass. That was a beautiful play by Perez. He just floated that ball up there. But a great hit. You can see Kevin Tomlinson coming to the pitcher. Does an excellent job. Now watch this. You just, well, I can't, well, I said, no, you can't do that. <laughs> but anyway, throws the ball right down the middle. Tomlinson and also uh, Ronnie Lee come in there and just absolutely destroy the receiver. Well, that's the problem. You're going to get hit like that. You might as well catch the ball and hold on to it. Liggins in motion through for formation to the left. Back to pass again. Perez over the middle. It is caught at the 35 down to the 30-yard line where Ronnie Lee makes the tackle again. And that was uh, the receiver that time, Jim Carter, for San Jose State. Down at the Washington State 30-yard line. That is a 16-yard gain for San Jose State. And another passing first down, but hold everything. There's a penalty marker down on the play. So we have a penalty marker down, and I think they're going to bring it back is what they're going to do because San Jose State already has walked back, so it looks like it's against the Spartans. Back at midfield is where the flag is. That was behind the line of scrimmage and perhaps is holding. This is a very, very poised San Jose State team for only the second game in the season. Unfortunately, this penalty is really going to hurt them. I don't know what it is, but Perez is doing a great job of shredding the, the underneath protection of the Cougars right now. Brian Holding. Ford was running over there. He tried to, he threw the ball in there. Nice completion. Big raindrops, not a lot of them, but great big ones coming down. Straight down. Split backs now behind Perez. Back he goes to pass. He sets up, throws over the middle. Ball is caught at the 50 and fighting his way and scrambling and struggling as he got down to the Cougar 47-yard line. Goes the receiver on the play, James Saxon, out of the backfield. And Saxon is going to help up Sean Landrum, or Artie Holmes, was it? Artie Holmes who knocked him down. And they'll put the ball at the 47-yard line of Washington State. That is a gain of nine on the play on that pass, but it is now fourth down for San Jose. 
kicking situation. Deal, who kicked 49 yards on his last one, averaged 44 last week. Gets a low snap, but gets it up in the air. Good one. Waiting, Kittrick Taylor back on his own 12. Got out of the way, just ran out of there. The ball bounced way up in the air and is killed at the 14-yard line by Bill Klump, a tight end downfield. Has two men wide to the left. There goes Broussard out in motion to the right. Back blunt, short drop. Caught behind the line, broke a tackle. Running right, it's open. 15, 20 up the sidelines, 25 and out of bounds. At the 27-yard line, Eddie Blunt, he changed the play at the line, took a short drop, couple of steps back, came up to throw, got rushed. He was hit, pulled away, and ran that ball to the 27-yard line, 13 yards, and a first down. Boy, that almost brings back memories of Ricky Turner and his scrambling ability. Eddie did a nice job. All his receivers were covered. He dropped down in the pocket, waited, didn't force the ball in there, but really did a nice job of getting outside containment and picking up the first down. Cougars lead 3-0, split backs, two men wide to the left, ball on the right, hash mark at the uh, check at the 27-yard line. Back to pass blunt now keeps the ball runs left slipped the tackle 30 35 broke loose to the 40 goes near the 42 yard line before he's finally ridden down ed blunt carrying the ball himself again this time to the left side and goes to the 42 that is a 15 yard run and another first down only the third rushing first down for Washington State, and two of them come on successive plays. Well, we're talking about lightning offensively here, but we're also talking about it in the sky. And Thunder Boomers are starting to break forth. Well, that's that's even wilder than Dust Devils. <laughs> so let's watch, see what happens. Broussard, who was set out left, now moves back into the backfield. Split backs behind quarterback Ed Blunt. Eddie calls the plays. Now both backs move. They're going to have to get somebody stopped, or he's going to have to take a timeout. He steps back, takes the timeout as the clock was about to run down. What happened was that Broussard and and Porter both went in motion. Porter didn't know Broussard had moved, so he kept going, and Blunt, to avoid a penalty, had to take the timeout. Signals called by quarterback Blunt. Broussard in motion out to the left. Back goes Blunt, backpedaling to set up. Throws deep right side. Stallworth open, and he's gone at the 25-20. 10-5. Touchdown, Tim Stallworth. All the way, 58 yards for a Washington State touchdown. Tim Stallworth from Ed Blunt. And the Cougars strike like that lightning that we're watching. And up go the balloons now at the west end of the stadium as the ball was thrown over the middle by Ed Blunt. Stallworth caught it over the middle and went all the way 58 yards to score. Well, I'll tell you, that time was just straight for it, man for man for San Jose State. Stallworth was able to get in the inside. Uh, pretty tough coverage there by number 25, John King. But unfortunately, the ball was thrown inside. Stallworth made the break, and he was untouched. For good speed, spin it all the way down their 58-yard touchdown. All right, the extra point try now, Kevin Adams. Mitch Dillard puts on jersey number 81 instead of his regular lineman 70 to block outside. Here's the snap back, the kick end over end is up. The kick is good, and so the Cougars add the extra point, and now with 5.28 to play in the first half, it is Washington State 10 and San Jose State nothing on the 58-yard touchdown pass. Brugger's fan out across the 30-yard line. The ball on the tee in the middle of the field on the 35. A short run. Here's the kick by Obrastov. He drives it this time to the goal line. Taken there by Eskridge. Up the middle he comes now. At the 15, at the 20 in the middle. Check it. That's Casey Clark. And Clark is out to the 35-yard line before Ricky Reynolds knocks him down. First and 10, San Jose at their own 35. Ten Motion now. Malaulu through to the right side. Here's the fake for the quarter. Quarterback Perez back deep, throws to the right side for Malo Ulu. It is penalty marker down as Malo Ulu tried to get to the ball and somebody went over his back. It may have been Reynolds. Let's wait and see. No, it was Artie Holmes who came up to try and cover on the play and went over his back and there are penalty flags down. I think we have an interference. Yard line, not the 46, so two yards less on the gain. Motion by Liggins through to the left. Back goes Perez again. Good protection. Throws deep over the middle. Penalty marker down as we have interference called on Thomason. They're going after the ball. Jim Carter, the receiver, down at the 20 and Thomason got to him, Paul, just a step too soon. Uh, that, that was the same type deal. Uh, Holmes did the same thing. It was a timing deal. He was trying to come in Hit the receiver as soon as the ball got there, unfortunately. I'll tell you, if Tomlinson could have read that ball, that was a floater. Perez threw that thing up there for grabs. If he could have read it, he would have been able to pick that thing off, but he went for the man pass interference. Now, the players are not used to this yet. They've gone downfield to where the ball, where the flag went down. They've got to come back. It's a 15-yard penalty, not a spot foul. 
as the ball was uh, in the air, and Thomason came with a cross-body block. Again. Here, Tim Stasekel, 269-pounder from Modesto. Ball on the right hash. Two men left, one split right. Back to pass goes the quarterback, Perez. Throws over the middle again. Diving try by Mala Ulu. Hasty covering, and it's incomplete. So the incomplete pass makes it now 11 for 19 through the air. Jim Walden during the week after looking at the film said he thought that Perez was probably a 35 throws a game type quarterback. He's at 19 and we're still in the first half. This is going to be one of those typical PC2A shootouts. There's going to be 300 passes in the air, 138 completions and 3,000 points. <laughs> they were a little exaggerated there, but that's the kind of game these guys like to play. Out of the ball game now comes Stasekill, the center. He's got an equipment problem. One of his pads is torn loose. Looks like the shoulder pad has been destroyed. How do you destroy a shoulder pad underneath a jersey like that on an offensive lineman? Ball, uh, <laughs> I would I would refute that, uh, that announcement. Very heavily. We've had two blocked field goal attempts. Ricky Reynolds has been able to get his hands on two San Jose field goal attempts. Great defensive plays. We've had an interception that was nearly returned for a touchdown by San Jose State. We've had penalties, fumbles, bumbles. We even have a lightning storm. So if you want to have excitement, come on down here folks <laughs> oh they're cheering the lightning now <laughs> in fact bob you're gonna have to go stand up on the top of the booth hold up a little rod and uh, see if we can get better reception may i go back to my old notre dame days and just sing shake down the thunder from the sky <laughs> i don't know how safe it is to be sitting out there in those aluminum seats with lightning bolts coming down what are those helmets made out of <laughs> <laughs> all right we are ready to resume the ball at the 33 yard line of washington state second down and 10. Right hash mark, man in motion, Liggins out to the left. Back to pass goes Perez, the rush, he throws over the middle, tipped in the air, almost caught by Liggins, and it fell incomplete. And what a, what a pressure applied by Ronnie Lee that time, who came up from the secondary spot. That was just a jet blitz in defensive terminology turn. That means a strong safety comes up. They're playing man for man back there. Everybody's got to line up, mark off their man. Uh, Lee blitzed from the, from the downside of the right side of the field and really did a good job of putting pressure on Perez. He had to throw that ball, ball before he had time. Here comes uh, Cortez Thomas into the ballgame as a wide receiver. Even the players are starting to put the sideline capes over their heads now at the benches. San Jose didn't bring any rain gear. They don't have any. They're putting towels over their heads. Here they go now. Third down. Back goes Perez, the quarterback. Deep throws over the middle. Tipped away by Thomas and incomplete. That one intended for Cortez Thomas right down over the middle at the 20. And Thomason went leaping in the air and slapped it away. He just redeemed himself on that one. He was able to come up. Man for man coverage that time. He read the ball beautifully. Broke right in front of the receiver and knocked it down. Penalty marker down in the backfield. We may have a holding call against San Jose State. I think the Cougars would decline it if that were the case. Fourth down coming in the field goal unit, I believe, is coming on for San Jose State. It, no, it is not. It is the punting unit. So the uh, Cougars probably will decline the penalty. It was a dead ball personal foul, so the down advances anyway. They're going to get the penalty and the down advances because it was after the play. It's a dead ball foul. Wow. So that means fifth down and 37? No, it's fourth down. Oh, okay. <laughs> fourth down coming as they take the ball way back out. So even if that had been the field goal team, it would not be there. Now look at that rain Holy come smoke. down. If this was the Apple Cup, I'd say it's raining cats and dogs out here. But I'll tell you right now, this is it's unbelievable. Boy, I'll tell you, it's raining loaves and fishes out there right now. <laughs> We're going to have a miracle here pretty quick. You, you know it. Tom Deal back to do the punting. Hold everything. They don't have the stick set yet. They move the sticks. They have moved the sticks. Now they've got to try and find the spot. The cardinal sin of a sideline official. He moved the sticks when he shouldn't. And they moved them. And now they're trying to get them relocated to where they should be. They're doing a pretty good job. They're doing a creditable job. I think they're going to have them pretty close to the right spot. But with the ball away back at the 48-yard line, I don't think it's going to make an awful lot of difference right now. It's hailing. It's hail. It really is. Beautiful weather in the Palouse. Ping-pong ball-size hail. Here's the punter back. The snap to him. He caught it against his belly. Gets the kick away. High floater. Here's Taylor under it. On his knees. Caught it at the 20-yard line. No fair catch, but he caught the ball falling forward at the 20. And this is a hail and lightning storm. And I'll tell you, the San Jose <laughs> folks are going home and tell you, every time in Pullman, it happens like this. <laughs> every time the Spartans come to Pullman. Last time it went to zero degrees. And now the hail is coming down so hard you can barely see the far side of the field. And everybody's covering up for protection now. 
It isn't a matter now trying to keep dry. They're trying to protect their skulls from this stuff. What do you think Otis Day, my man, must be thinking about this? He said, first bats Domino walks out of this thing. Now the heavens are opening up. You Holy see the smokes. older guys know, Paul. That's experience. <laughs> Fats knew not to come. The field is turning white. And now Ed Blunt walks away from his center. He doesn't want to take the snap under these conditions. And the referee steps in and calls time. And the Cougars have taken time. No, they've been charged with delay of the game. The clock ran down. The scoreboard is flashing Cougar weather out there. Oh, come on. I've never seen it quite like this. And the cheerleaders are surfboarding on their bellies out there on the ice. It is ski season in <laughs> Pullman. And it's coming through the opening in our windows here to the booth. And the field has turned white. They've got a giant tarp up in the Bob Euchre seats up in the corner of the stands. And the Cougars are back at the 15-yard line. First down and 10 at the 15. Blunt hands off to Porter, sliding and skidding as he comes into the line and uh, takes the ball out to about the 17-yard line, and that is all. Rick Chase downfield got buried by one of the defensive backs in a race Ryan Rasnick had him. Signals called by Eddie Blunt. Porter and Broussard behind him. Broussard straight up in the middle, dives over the 20 to the 21-yard line and is dragged down by Mark Dean. Dean got there first to make the tackle, and Barry Kidney also there at the 21. Broussard, a three-yard gain. It's a quick kick. Yeah, the Cougars are now. Here's the snap back with the kicker tying his shoe. Snap back went over his head. Running right, he gets it away somehow up the field. That was Rosenbaum, and it's a great one over midfield 30. 25 down to the 21-yard line. Oh, Tim real. Rosenbaum kicked that ball. 58 yards. Unbelievable. He was tying his shoe, the old fake for the quick kick, back in the short punt, tying his shoe, but they snapped the ball over his head. Not only did they, they snap the ball over his head, but he did a great job. He was able to avoid a defensive end. Number 74 came in there that That's time. Mark Dean. Mark Dean, he's a big kid. And then he kicked a spiral. That thing rolls all the way down there to the 20, 25-yard line. Unbelievable. Yeah, it, it hit across midfield. It got across midfield before it hit. What if Mark Rippon called him up and gave him some instructions on a quick kick? I don't take? know. Maybe he was up watching a rugby game this morning someplace. Jeez. That was a rugby-style play. All right, the ball back at the 22-yard line is where they put it down. First down and 10. Back goes Perez. Out to the right side, little swing pass. Got his receiver out there. That's Donald Stewart. And Stewart, who started his career as a Cougar running back, Paul says he's got a dry spot. Well, maybe I can find one over here. But uh, it's all streaked, and it gives you a correction in the window. I'll put my glasses on. Maybe I can see. Signals called. Two men to the left. And the quarterback, Mike Perez, changing his play at the line. Long count. Snap. Back he goes. Throws upfield. That one caught by Malo Ulu, who takes it through the surf to the 40-yard line. The young man from Oceanside, who must feel like he's running in this stuff right now, out to the 40-yard line on that completion. That is a 15-yard gain and a passing first down for San Jose State. So the Spartans with their eighth first down through the air, only their tenth overall, but eight through the air. Perez has been very sharp. He's still hanging in there. Sure, they don't have any points on the board, but his passing is very, very good. Malaulu has been on the end of a lot of catches so far. Yes, he has. He's a good one. Two out to the right, one to the left. Malaulu to alone to the left side. Lone running back Kenny Jackson back. Davis, short drop. Throw over the middle. Tipped in the air. Ronnie Lee, I think, got a fingertip on that ball and knocked it away. And the ball meant for Malaulu was over his head and in complete. Erwin Chappelle was also there. So Perez sets him again, second and ten at the 40. Back he goes with the ball now, sets up eight yards deep, throws long over the middle. There's Thomas, and he picks it off back at his own 32, up to the 35, to the 40. He bumped and knocked down at the 45-yard line. It looked like he wanted to get outside to the left, but he had been bumped, lost his balance, and on the very wet field could not regain it, and brought the ball back out to the 45. So, as they say, you live by the pass, you die by the pass occasionally. And on the 25th attempt, the second interception. Well, I thought uh, Tomlinson might have been able to get an interception earlier in the ball game where he went for the man instead of the ball. That was the same kind of pass. That was just kind of a perfect weather, a floating duck out there. Threw the ball up in the air. He fair caught it, was able to pick it, pick it up, and it kind of stumbled on a couple of hail balls that knocked him down about the 35-yard line. Unless a lot of people are coming back for the Otis Day <laughs> concert, they're going to be playing to a very, very thin house here this afternoon. A lot of people are just streaming out of this stadium on their way home in this weather. Broussard in motion out to the right, trips right, back to pass Blunt. Sets up, long, long time, rolls right, throws up field, Chase has it as he's over the 45 at the 44-yard line. Rick Chase down to the 44, that should be good for a first down. An 11-yard gain for the Cougars and a first down. 
So the Cougars pick up the first down on that one and go to exactly 200 yards of offense here in the first half as they complete their sixth out of nine attempts. Back goes Blunt again, throws left side to Taylor, who was down in the wet to make that catch for Washington State for a short game. They'll put that one at the 41-yard line, only a three-yard advance that time, and the Cougars now are seven for 10, but there's a penalty flag down. There's a marker down. So let's see what we have coming now from the referee. Personal foul against Ooh. San Jose State. He said there were still some UNLV players lurking in the tunnel waiting <laughs> to make a hit the next morning. Here's the snap. Blunt drops back, sets up, throws for the end zone, and is overthrown meant for Chase, who is slammed down at the goal line. Raznick came down and got him. That was Raznick who made the hit, but the uh, ball fell incomplete. I like that kid. You do, well, eh? You bet. Jim Walden was really high on him. They thought uh, Washington State had a chance to get him, but unfortunately, I think the uh, family ties were a little bit stronger. He headed south, but he's the kind of guy, he's throwing his body all over the field, a little free safety. He's a freshman, pretty tough kid, 5'10", 172-pounder. He's playing hard. Comes out of Torrance, California, down in the uh, southwest part of Los Angeles, down where El Camino College is located. All right, out of the huddle they come, split backs, and they've got the back to pass now goes Eddie Blunt, fakes his way up the middle, penalty marker down as he high steps his way back to the 21-yard line, and we may have a holding call on Washington State on this one, as Blunt was trying to pick his way out of there that time and just couldn't find any running room, got back to the 21, but the flag is down. Tell you, a very elusive runner, Eddie Blunt is. He did a nice job. I couldn't tell who it was, but it almost looked like one of the Cougar linemen tackled. Holding is probably the kind word in that one, but he really body slammed the San Jose State defensive line. They're going to bring it back. Well, not unusual on a day like this. You try to get your feet under you to make a block, and somebody turns, and your feet go sliding out, and you just sort of grab whoever's going by. Mark my word. By the end of the game, we will have sun out. I promise. Oh, yes. Just wait a minute. Eh? Maybe the lightning even will come back. <laughs> they take the ball back to the 34-yard line. So it will be for the Cougars, second down and 20. Now, no running backs. Everybody out. Quick pass. Left side chase. 30, 25, 20. Still fighting at the 15 and very close to a first down. Rick Chase with no running back. Five receivers. Everybody out. They spread the field and completed to Chase. And he got down to the 15-yard line. That's a 19-yard gain for Washington State on the pass. And it'll... Be second down and about a yard, third down, about a yard to go. Again, they spread. Two men left, three men right. Back to pass goes Blunt. Hit and down he goes at about the 24 or 5 yard line. Ed Blunt with nobody there to protect at all, Paul, just tried to get back, and a lineman came across hard and made contact. Cougars will try the field goal. Blunt will hold for Obrastov. He will kick from 40 yards out, off the 30-yard line, just inside the left hash. The lines are set The snap. Here's the kick. Long, high, end over end. It is good from 40 yards. Nick Obrastov, a 40-yard field goal. So each of the kickers has a field goal today. This one coming with one minute and 12 seconds remaining in the first half to make the score 13 to nothing in favor of Washington State. And the Cougars, who have done all their scoring so far in the ballgame in this second quarter, have taken a 13 to nothing lead. It has not been an easy 13 to nothing lead. It has been hard fought. The rain has stopped now. At least it looks like it has. Our window has begun to dry up. We can see out again. And the standing water on the field is now the problem here at Martin Stadium. And I don't know whether they have a chance to squeegee that off at halftime or whether it's a longer process than that, but I do know they use a snow scraper blade sometimes <laughs> before a game when it's very wet to try to get it off, and we may see that at halftime. I understand Dick Young recruited that man at uh, New England who came out there and was the snowblower that <laughs> allowed New England to beat uh, the Jets a while back, so maybe we'll get to see him in action. <laughs> you, you might very well be right. Blue and white balloons are beginning to settle over the San Jose State bench now. Ball is up on the tee at the 35-yard line. The Cougars about to kick it off. Casey Clark is back deep to receive now for San Jose State. Here's the kick now, end over end. Long, it'll go in the middle. Clark in the end zone is going to run it out from three yards deep. At the 5, the 10, 15, up the middle, 20. 25, still going at the 30. 35, 40, and finally Ricky Reynolds got him at around the 40, 41-yard line. The ball came out. The Cougars are claiming it. Let's see if they get it or not. Oh, Both sides bubble. claiming. That's what they said. The oh. Cougars are claiming the ball. I'll tell you, he stripped that ball right out from but Casey I Clark. He came right don't think they're right going to get it. I don't think Shame they're going to get you. it. Shame I, on them. That's a penalty. I, 
We're Thank throwing a flag on that call. <laughs> you're going to nail the officials five you yards on that one, huh? <laughs> All right, others are going to jump last year in Washington when they had one like that. Now ready, Cougars four down linemen defensively at the line of scrimmage. Back to pass, goes the quarterback. Guess what? Throws over the middle. That ball tipped in the air. It is in the air, still incomplete. Ronnie Collins had about three tries at that one. The last one, a groping left-handed, one-handed attempt to catch it, and the ball came down incomplete. Looked like he was fishing for a trout or something that time. He just he got a nice coverage that time. It looks like Perez is trying to th force the ball in there a little bit. The ball was on a little bit high, a little bit behind the receiver, but a couple of defensive backs came in. Collins had a couple of shots at it, bounces off guys' hands, helmets, feet, finally lands on the ground, incomplete pass. I think the receiver did a pretty good job bumping Collins away from it, too. He sure did. Nice job. So is second down and 10 at the 41 for San Jose. Back again goes Mike Perez. Throws swing out to the right side. Kenny Jackson at the 40. Upfield 45. Hit by Brian Ford at midfield. And down he goes right on the 50. Ford and Thomason and Ricky Reynolds and Dean Terulio all ganging up there to make the tackle at the 50-yard line. So all from the 41 to the 50. A nine-yard passing advance on that. And it will be third down and one yard to go. San Jose State. We're down to 32 seconds left in the half. Third and one at midfield. Back goes Perez from the right hash mark. Throws left side behind Jackson incomplete. Well, they're going to go for it now, and it is uh, fourth down and one. Whatever happened, they didn't penalize him for it. It's fourth and one, and they're still going to go for it from uh, the 50-yard line, just 49-and-a-half yard line. Signals call. Back to pass. The quarterback throws right side incomplete, and then the oh. receiver got a forearm <laughs> under the chin that time. It was Guy Liggins hit by Artie Holmes and flattened at the Cougar bench, and the pass was incomplete. So the ball does go over to the Cougars, and they will have it now as they uh, change ends of the ball at the 49-yard line of San Jose State. It'll be first down 10 for the Cougars with 21 seconds remaining to play in the first half. All I have to say is I think we can sum this first half up in a sense of being unique because I've never seen one like this. No, but one thing about doing Cougar football through the years, Paul, I found that, that almost every week is unique. <laughs> there are very few ununique weeks. Eh? <laughs> All right, Cougars with five receivers, no running backs. Back to pass, Blunt, good protection in the middle. Throws right side, Taylor, open on the 40, 35, and steps out of bounds at around the 33-yard line. Kittrick Taylor down to the 33. From the 49 to the 33, 16 yards on the play for Washington State, and a first down. As the Cougars go to another new formation, this is the first time we've seen this one for them, not in this game. It's been shown earlier in this contest. Out of the huddle they come. Sears and Chase to the left side. Taylor, Stallworth, and Wood to the right side. Oh, and no tight end. Snap, back to pass, rush in the middle. Blunt trying to get away, got back down to the 35-yard line and is hauled down there for a two-yard loss. And that's, I think, going to do it because I don't believe the Cougars have another timeout left. Clock at two, at one, it is over. That is halftime. The first half is over as the Cougars hurry to try to get that five-receiver formation set again. And at the end of the first half, here in a, in a maze of weather, with lightning and thunder and sun and clouds and wind and rain and hail, everything possible that could happen. They, uh, no dust devils, no dust devils in the first half. I don't know if you've had a chance, but to congratulate the Huskies, a 40 to seven victory over Ohio State. That's a biggie, and I'll tell you right now, heads are gonna be rolling back in Columbus. Yes, they are. Here's the kick, low line drive kick down the middle, caught by one of the up men. He will bring it back up the field at the 25, at the 30, and bounce and twists his way forward now as he brought the ball back out over the 30-yard line. That's Rich Reed who brought that ball back for Washington State. Rich, a running back who was playing as the up man on the left side, caught that football and brought it back out to about the 33-yard line. And so that's where we'll start in this second half, at the 33-yard line, first down and 10 for Washington State, just inside their own left hash mark. The Cougars will go right to left in front of us, that is from east to west. Signals called with Alan Boatman at center, Ed Blunt, the quarterback, and split backs behind him, Porter and Broussard. Signals called, Blunt looking over the defense now, two wide men to the right, one to the left. 
Fairly long count, maybe checking off. Takes the ball, runs right, keeps it, turns the corner, dives out to the 35-yard line. All right, ready again with split backs. Two men to the left side this time. Kittrick Taylor wide left. Here's Blunt running left. Keeps the ball again as the trailer was back there. Spins around and is thrown back for a loss of a yard or two on the play. Maybe back to about where the Cougars started on the possession. Three down linemen on the front. The linebackers up on the outside for San Jose. Back goes Blunt to pass. Sets up. Throws right side. Caught at the 50-yard line. A completion for a first down right at midfield for Washington State to Cotton Sears. Sears caught the ball at the 50. That is a 16-yard gain and a first down for Washington State through the air. The Cougars' seventh passing first down. And another change of receivers, and they change them in twos and threes when they come in. They're shuttling the plays in with their receivers. And a very nice read by Ed Blunt that time. He had two options, to go to Kittrick Taylor in the flat, who was open, or Cotton Sears down 16 yards. He went for Sears. So the uh, no tight end offense now and three wide men. Here's the fake Blunt running left, pitches left to Broussard, tries to cut at the 50, and down he goes right on the line of scrimmage. It was Steve Broussard, no gain on the play. Sam Kennedy, a 220-pound senior outside linebacker from Watson, California. Ball is on the left hash mark now at the 49 and a half yard line. Second down, Cougars running room to their right. Motion to the left by Porter. Back goes Blunt. Backpedaling sets up. Throws back to the right. It's intercepted on the 35. Upfield with the ball, Casey Clark at the 50. 45 40. Blockers 35 30. Being chased by Blunt at the 10, the 5, and he is there to score, but there's a penalty flag down. There's a marker down back at around the 17 yard line. Probably a clip out in that area as the flag went down. Casey Clark, who blew a shoe, I think, on the way into the end zone, grabbed by the jersey at the goal line by Blunt. But there's a penalty marker down, and the officials have gathered, and it looks like a clip at the 17. So the interception then would stand, but the touchdown, the apparent touchdown, will not. Clipping called against San Jose State as they self-destruct on the run back. That was somewhere behind the ball. It was out in the middle of the field. No way anybody out there, Paul, was ever going to catch up to Casey Clark. San Jose State ball did not get the touchdown. Motion out to the right side. Back goes Mike Perez. The quarterback sets up over the middle, checks it off to his fullback, Saxon. He's down to the 20, inside the 20 to around the 17 or 18-yard line. James Saxon, a 190-pound junior from Sacramento, California, and takes the ball down around the 17, making the 18-yard line. So a 14-yard advance on the play. A 14-yard gain and a first down for San Jose on their first pass of the second half. That again with San Jose State just taking the field and letting it uh, work to their advantage. They spread everybody out. Saxon came in right underneath the zone. Perez just flipped it off to him. Spartans with the first down, trailing 10-0. Wind at their backs. Here's Perez to the tailback. Jackson picking his way in, trying to slide outside. He was grabbed. Down he goes. Away goes another shoe as Mark Ledbetter, a big freshman from Puyallup, made the initial contact and held on till help came from Thomason. But there was a gain on the play down to the 17. Well, that's not a very big gain as they moved the ball down for about a yard to the 17-yard line. He'll go in motion out wider to the right side now. Back to pass goes Perez. He throws to the right side. That's caught at the 10-yard line. That ball is caught right at the 10-yard line, or is it? No, maybe not. As the intended receiver was Greg Eskridge, and I think they ruled that the ball was trapped. There was no catch on the play. That was a nice defensive play that time by Kevin Thomason. He came up, it was man for man, came in, it looked like he stripped the ball. It was a completion, and then he came down and just knocked his arms right down. Good defensive effort. Coach Kenny, uh, Jimmy Burroughs must feel pretty good about that with the secondary. Ball still on the 17-yard line. Now third down and nine. It's at the left hash mark. So San Jose State trying to go into the horseshoe end at our right. The east end of the stadium has running room wide to the right, sidelines left. Split backs, back to pack, uh, pass Perez, no fake. Over the middle, it is incomplete. Going to have a penalty marker down. Thomason pushing off on uh, Malo Ulu, the intended receiver, got his hands on him and decked him. And so the flags come from several different directions. We'll have a pass interference call against Washington State. Boy, major cerebral mistake that time. That ball is 25 yards over his head. That's just a dumb play is the second San Jose first down on a Cougar penalty. So they put it down at about the two, make it the three, and it'll be first down and goal. High formation, receivers out to both sides from the three-yard line. Pitch back, Jackson running left, ducks inside one man, fights to the goal line, is pushed to the flag, and he is in for a touchdown. It is a touchdown for San Jose State as Kenny Jackson got just to the pylon in the corner and scored the first touchdown of the second half on a three-yard run. 
Kenny Jackson, the tailback, scores with 10.54 remaining to play in the third quarter. So the San Jose State Spartans, taking advantage of their interception, have brought the ball down the field now and scored to narrow the gap. It is now 13-6 to six as San Jose State apparently will go for the one-point conversion with Sergio Oliveras there to kick. Mike Perez, the quarterback, will hold the ball, spotting at the 10. The lines are set. The snap back on the tee is up, and Reynolds almost got it, but it is good. He booted it through. Well, on an afternoon that has seen the weather run the entire gamut, some of the young fans have found some hot food down there to eat, and I hope they've got a lot of those little green things that are so hot in there <laughs> because that will help. <laughs> but anyway, we're ready to go now. The ball will be put up on the tee. It blew off again, <laughs> and Oliveras will once again get it back up there for the kickoff with Jim Hasty deep in the middle for Washington State at the goal line. The Spartans went uh, five plays, 32 yards, took them one minute and 37 seconds, culminating in the Kenny Jackson three-yard run, but it was sent up by the interception by Casey Clark, and I'll tell you, the momentum has changed. Well, San Jose State certainly has added roll in here in the second half. The kick down the sidelines, taken by an up man once again. That's Rick Chase. He's at the 20, at the 25 in the middle, coming back in, gets to about the 27-yard line, and down goes Rick Chase on the return. The senior from Olympia on the carry back that time with the tackle finally made by Larry Woodson. He's a safety man and playing on special teams for San Jose State. First down, Washington State at the 27. Cougars actually didn't run all that well in the first half, only 63 yards. But we're not seeing any five receivers now. Blunt pitch back right side. Porter trying to get around the corner, but he is wrapped up and gets almost nothing on the play. Kerry Porter trying the right side and leading the way defensively that time from the corner linebacker, the outside linebacker spot, Lloyd Forrest. And it appears we have a Cougar player shaken up on the play. And from our angle, although it's hard to see it, it may be Steve Broussard who's down on the ground. And uh, Mark Smaha and his training staff are out to see now if uh, what has happened to the player. Looks like he might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. He is down, and we have a brief break in play as the Cougars make some player changes once again. We are playing in the third quarter. Washington State leading now by a score of 13-7 to after taking a 13-0 lead into the intermission at halftime. Broussard out under his own power walked off. And so the Cougars are ready after a one-yard gain. It's second down. Fake pitch right. Back to pass. Blunt throws deep downfield for Taylor and hit a defender, Casey Clark, in the back. Clark was running underneath Taylor, behind him, trailing him, and the ball hit him in the back and fell incomplete. So from the 28-yard line, it'll be third down and nine. And another player hurt, this time a San Jose State player, and I think that that is Forrest, the linebacker, who is down. It looks like Forrest who stayed down that time, the linebacker, and the, can the uh, San Jose State training staff now has gone out to take a look to see if they can figure out what's wrong with him. In response to Bl Blount that time, that he was under an awful lot of pressure. He was running around there scrambling for his life. Kittrick Taylor was trying to run a seam pattern. He just tried to float the ball up there, let Kittrick run underneath it. Unfortunately, Casey Clark ran underneath it, knocked it down with his back. Had he turned around, that would have been another interception. <laughs> Inside him. Michael James in motion, Tingstad out to the right side, back goes Blunt again, sets up, rushed from the back side, hit down he goes on the 25-yard line. He's down on the 25. Now let's see who's got the ball as we get a little bit of pushing and shoving. I think Blunt went down with the ball, and then somebody yanked it away. Now that's just my impression from up here, and we've got a lot of shoving and pushing going on. The Cougars did retain possession at the 25, a three-yard loss. And so Washington State has only 16 yards of offense in this half so far. But then so San Jose only has 15, and they scored. Well, Washington State has not been very impressive. They've gone five plays with the interception of the first drive, four plays and, and out, have to punt here in the second drive. So Doug Wellsant gets it up in the air against the wind. The safety man, Casey Clark. No, the up man's going to take it on a fair catch at the 36-yard line. The up man making the catch that time for the uh, San Jose State Spartans, Freddie Payton, a 5'7", 155-pounder from Bryan, Texas, who is the oldest man on the San Jose State team. And the quarterback continues to be Mike Perez out of Taft Junior College, his hometown, Denver, Colorado. He has the ball, he fakes the handoff, rolls right, throws a little soft pass, upfield over the hands of James Saxon, the intended receiver, Ronnie Collins running with him as Saxon flared out of the backfield to the right sidelines, and the pass incomplete. That's the thing that really makes these passing teams so frustrating to play against, because they'll throw a couple of 
incompleted passes. They need 10 yards. They get 12 on the next one. So they're very tough to hang in there in defense against. You just have to be very patient and hope sooner or later that they'll break down on their own because when you throw 35, 40, 45 times a game, they're going to be mistakes. I think that's 32 if memory serves me there. I count them all. That's 32 so far. Signals called. Tim Stasekill in at center. Here's the handoff now to the tailback. Jackson hit as he struggles to the 40-yard line and dragged down. Marvin Adams, the defensive left end, made the hit. He's from Modesto, California, 255-pound junior. And the play carried out to the 40, so Jackson picks up three yards. And it'll be third down and seven at the 40-yard line. Ball just inside the 40 for the white jersey, blue-helmeted San Jose State Spartans. Again, Perez, the strong-arm quarterback, ready. One running back. Back he goes. Throws left side deep. That ball is knocked. Is it caught? Yes, it is. That ball is caught by Lafo Malaulu down at the Washington State 39-yard line. Malaulu was hit as the ball arrived, and he still held on to that ball at the Washington State 39-yard line. A 21-yard pass gain and another passing first down for San Jose State. That's their 10th first down through the air. And now into the ball game with the play comes tight end Bill Klump. Out of there comes Kenny Nash, a wide receiver. It is 13 to 7, Washington State midway through the third quarter. San Jose State on the move again. They'll set two receivers, including Mala Ulu, out to the left side. And timeout called now by the quarterback, Mike Perez, as he looked over the defense. <laughs> as we get back to play. Attempted by Mike Perez for Guy Liggins down in the end zone. Knocked away by Sean Landrum of Washington State. So the incomplete pass on the 34th attempt of the game by the San Jose State Spartans. And they're now second and 10 at the Cougar 39-yard line. But with the ball in Cougar territory, they just decided to go for the end zone in one strike, and away they went. It was knocked down, but it uh, loosens up the defense. Here's a draw now. Jackson in the middle, and he's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's submarined out of there by Brian Ford, the middle linebacker. Ford got in to make the initial hit. Brian, who had 131 tackles last year, tough young man, and great range and reading ability in that middle, Paul. Well, I tell you, great defensive play by Ford that time. He just read draw all the way, came flying up in there, took about eight bodies out, finally knocked him down. The Cougars have been very strong against the rush here. Unfortunately, they've just been getting beat underneath on those quick passes, but that's going to happen when you have this kind of attack. They put the ball on the 41. It's third down 12 now for San Jose State. Three wide receivers, two to the right. Back to pass goes the quarterback, Perez, over the middle. That ball is caught by Liggins. He's at the 30 and close to a first down. Hauled down just inside the sidelines. Artie Holmes made the tackle for Washington State, but it may be a first down as he took the ball to the 29-yard line. Officials with the ball right over there say yes it is without measurement because the ball's right in front of the sticks. So a first down at the 29-yard line, a 12-yard passing gain, and a first down. And they are now in this ball game 17 for 35 with 11 for first downs. Wow. Great. That's great production when you're talking about first down uh, ratio and turnovers and all those wonderful things. Well, they're going to have to get more pressure on the quarterback. The Cougars have not gotten to him very often. Motion out to the right side by Malo Ulu. Back to pass Perez. Here comes the rush. Up the middle. It goes over the top to Liggins. Liggins has that ball down to around the 21-yard line. Ford on the drop and Dean Terulia both back there to make the tackle for Washington State. Ricky Reynolds helping out. They'll put that one down at the 21. It's an 8-yard advance and it'll be second down and two yards to go for San Jose from the Cougar 21-yard line. You talk about a lack of pressure. I don't know if it's the inability of the Cougar defensive line or just great blocking by the offensive line by San Jose State, but the Cougs are blissing. blissing. They're trying to do some different things and get pressure in Perez's face. Four man down front. Here's the pitch now. Jackson running the right side, trying to wind it back into the middle. He's got the first down. He's down to the 15-yard line. It is Kenny Jackson, the tailback. He started wide to the right, turned back, sort of winding back into the middle. Kevin Thomason up from the secondary made the stop for Washington State that time. Kevin, who plays at the free safety, a senior out of Sacramento. With that ball just outside the 15-yard line, that's a six-yard gain, and that is a first down, the second rushing first down in the ball game for San Jose State. They just don't run the ball very often. 
And I guess there's no reason to when you can throw it successfully. Of course, Washington State hasn't had many of their own either. No. Here's a fake draw. Back goes Perez. Throws left side under pressure and over through Reynolds. And Perez was decked that time by Dean Terulia, the weak side linebacker from Sammamish High School in Bellevue. And that was pressure, and it caused the... the incomplete pass that was pain <laughs> because Perez got up there and started wandering off towards the goal line wanted to shake an official's hand he really was dinged signals called out of the eye fake to Jackson back goes Perez throw right side got his man out of the backfield that is Saxon he's inside the five and out of bounds at about the three yard line Saxon knocked out by Thomason Sean Landrum and Ricky Reynolds as the Cougars secondary got there they ganged up on him but he got a first down at the three yard line a 12 yard gain and it is first down and goal to go now for San Jose State first and goal as they continue to throw that ball with great effect ball on the right hash mark that gives them running room to the left sidelines to the right two tight end offense and a wing back Eskridge to the right eye formation in the backfield handoff Jackson tailback drives in on the right got down near the one yard line Jackson struggling trying to get to the goal line with the ball but the officials had blown it dead and were marking the spot all the while he was still struggling and he will go only to the one yard line Brian Ford at the bottom of the stack for Washington State and also in there for the Cougars, Jim Krakowski playing at the strong side linebacker. Two-yard gain. It is second and goal at the one. Well, it better. It's 13 to 7. The I formation, wing back, right formation, San Jose. Handoff. Jackson slants left. Touchdown, San Jose State. And this ball game is tied with 5-11 to go in the third quarter. As Kenny Jackson, the tailback, slants off the left side from one yard out and scores with 5-11 remaining to play in the third quarter and San Jose State has tied the game with the extra point attempt coming for Sergio Olivares and a chance to go ahead for the first time in the game. There was no scoring in the first quarter. The Cougars scored 13 points in the second. Now in the third, San Jose State has scored 13 and they're threatening to take the lead if they can boot the 14th here. Lines are set. They'll put the ball on the 10. The snap back, it's on the tee. Reynolds dives, and the kick is no good wide to the left. Ricky Reynolds coming off the left side. I don't think touched the ball, but he did hurry the kick and force the wide kick to the left. And so we remain deadlocked with 5-11 to go in the third quarter. It is Washington State 13 and San Jose State 13. And here's the run-up. Oliveira is the kick. Long and end over end with the wind. Hasty way back in the end zone. Drops the ball. And I'm sure we'll cover it now. Yes, he does. Goes to one knee. So the Cougars will come out and start at the 20-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go at their own 20. And a 13-13 ball game. That some pressure by Ricky Reynolds kept in a tie. Kept the Cougars from falling behind. I think San Jose State has really done well in the second half has denied the Washington State ground game to the outside. They've really done a good job of flying up the field, denying Ed Blunt, Broussard, and Porter a chance to get those running alleys. They haven't been able to get open or running wise, and that's really hurt their passing game. So the Cougars in those crimson jerseys, gray helmets, gray pants, break out of the huddle. Alan Boatman, the senior from Kettle Falls, up over the ball, split backs behind quarterback Ed Blunt. Wide receivers, two to the right, one to the left. Here's the handoff now, fake Blunt running right, hit behind the line, and driven down for a loss. As through to get him came Edwin Bird, a 6'3", 247-pound senior from Oroville, California. Bird is the backup at the defensive left end on the three-man front. And he was quick across the line in reading that option, and Blunt was dropped for a loss back to the 18-yard line. So a two-yard loss, and the Cougars' second-half offense is a net 14 yards at the present time. Out of the huddle they come now. Once again, ready at the line. The tight end is to the left. Wide receivers to either side and split backs. Here's the fake. Blunt turns now, rolls that little naked option, uh, roll to the right, throws up field. Diving catch, no. The ball in and out of the hands of Chris Leighton, the tight end. He went diving to the turf near the sidelines, and Leighton failed to hold on to that football, and so the incompletion makes it third down and 12 at the 18. Linebacker has come out. I think they've gone to a nickel defense with an extra back in for San Jose State now. Third down, 12. Cougars at their own 18-yard line. Here's Blunt faking the pitch, rolling out to the left side this time. Throws the ball upfield. It's incomplete, meant for Leighton. If Leighton had not been there, if that ball had gone beyond him, Victor Wood was open at the 30, and the ball may very 
very well have been intended for Wood, Paul, because he was standing facing the passer back at the 30-yard line just where he needed to be for the first down. But the ball never got to him. It was incomplete. And uh, the earlier injured Lloyd Forrest is limping off again for San Jose State. That's it for him for the day. That time, uh, Layton, the ball was right on the target. That was a nice pass, and it just went through. It looked like he tried to breadbasket the catch, went through his hands, fell incomplete. Casey Clark is deep now to receive the Doug Wellsant punt. Wellsant from Ritzville. The snap face high. Here's the kick away. Got it up in the air high and short. Fair catch signal. The up man dropped the ball but dives on it right at midfield. That ball was bobbled at midfield by Freddie Peyton, who was signaling a fair catch. And when the ball popped out of his arms, of course, it became a free ball. Anybody's for possession. But Peyton got there first, and it will belong to the San Jose State Spartans now. And they will start with the tail of the ball on the 50-yard line, so they are just edged over into Cougar territory. Call it the 50, because the tail of the ball is on the 50-yard line, but it's uh, on the Cougar side. The body of the momentum is on San Jose State side. The Cougar defense is going to have to come up with an excellent series here to turn it around. So here we go. Here's the quarterback, Perez. Swings a screen out to the left side. Caught by Malo Ulu. Down the left side he goes. Thomason got him. Penalty marker flies as uh, Malo Ulu got enough for a first down. Back. Now the quarterback with split backs behind him. Perez fakes the draw. Drops back on the play action. Throws left side incomplete. Saxon, the fullback. They fake the draw. And then Perez went very deep and threw to Saxon, flaring out to the left side. He was not able to get a hold of the ball, and it fell incomplete. I think San Jose is only three short today of Woody's career passing <laughs> record, aren't they? <laughs> Here's Perez ready to throw again. Sets him up at the line of scrimmage. They're just throw, throw, throw now. They tighten up in the backfield in the split back set. Long count. Clock down to zero. Too much time. It ran out on him. So they'll take the penalty. That'll take the ball back to the, just inside the 40-yard line. So they'll walk that one back. And it will be now third down, or check it, second down, back at the 40-yard line. Washington State was showing a man-for-man -man underneath. They may have been sending the inside backers. Preds sensed that. He was going to try to throw something, maybe a seam pattern or quick flare to beat that blitz. But unfortunately, by the time he audible, maybe it was in Latin or something. It <laughs> took him a little bit too long. They threw the hanky. 13-13 tie ball game, second down, 20. Motion through the formation to the right side. Here's the quarterback handing the ball away this time. And it is Kenny Jackson who gets just over the 40 to the 41-yard line. Jackson picked up just one yard. Terulia and Ford are pounding on each other. Well, one of them's going to go out with an injury if they keep that up. 41-yard <laughs> line, one-yard gain by Kenny Jackson. And so it'll be third down and 19 yards to go for San Jose State. Nice defensive play that time by the Cougar defensive line. They were looking pass all the way, just a, almost a shuttle pass or a little draw action there. Big defensive series here. This is third and 19th. The Cougs need to come up with a big play. And they're looking pass now. Four down linemen ready to rush. And the quarterback, Perez, says, that's enough. I can't hear. He says, we can't make it hurt in here. And he asks the referee to stop it all. And so they will reset the clock. He'll get a new 25. And the quarterback, Mike Perez, one running back. Back he goes to pass. Everybody out in the pattern. Long throw upfield. It is incomplete. Artie Holmes knocked it away. Artie Holmes was there to cover on the play on the pass intended for Liggins or for Jackson. I know that is Liggins. He knocked it away incomplete. Boy, great read by Artie Holmes that time. They were just playing zone. They were zoning it under. Perez made the correct read, threw the ball down there, but Holmes just made an excellent defensive play and really stoned Liggins, knocked him down on the ground. So now the Cougars will show 10 men at the line at this uh, punt formation at the 41-yard line of San Jose State. Kittrick Taylor is back to receive. They might be coming this time after Tom Deal. Here's the kick away. A good kick downfield. Back to the 20 goes Taylor running to the right. Got around the first man. 25-30 up the right side. Broke a tackle almost to the 40. Then is hit and bumped back and driven out of bounds. So a good return by Kittrick Taylor. From his own 20-yard line, and the man who finally got him was Yepi Pau, the <laughs> linebacker. He is not very big. He's 6 feet, 220, but he is awfully quick. We'll double-check that, but I think he's just become the all-time number one. He needed 37 coming in today. He had 20 earlier and 18 there. And Blunt runs the ball to the left side and is caught behind the line of scrimmage and wrestled down. As he tries to run the option, he is wrestled down on the play by Barry Kidney. Signals called now by Ed Blunt. Blunt with the ball, drops back. He's going to throw to the right side, a low throw that is caught on the trap by Cotton Sears. He caught it like an infielder that time on the short hop coming to him off the artificial turf. Cotton Sears from Pullman caught that one, but it is incomplete. And so the Cougars 
with the incomplete pass find themselves coming to third down back at the 36 yard line and 12 yards to go what? Rushed through the ball hard and low and Sears just waited for it and scooped it up on the short hop that was pretty easy to see officials on both sides of it so now ready once again blunt with a big third down split backs behind him back he goes it's a draw to Porter nothing Porter is hit right at the in his tracks as he tried to bring it up the middle Kerry Porter got that ball and is dropped immediately back at the 31 yard line for a five yard loss and the Cougars are down now would you believe to seven yards of offense in the second half as that time they went all in reverse and here comes Doug Wellsent to punt at fourth down at about 16 and a half 17 yards to go still a minute 48 and counting in this quarter Cougars kicking against the breeze that has died down considerably. Here's the rush. He got the kick away. A floater. Fair catch signaled by Clark, but that uh, ball is, is caught. It went to the sidelines and bounced out. He didn't catch the ball. He signaled for the fair catch and then let it go. It was way up in front of him. And so the ball went out with a sideways bounce at the 45-yard line. And that's where they'll take over at the 45. Three and out. Here's the snap. Perez fakes, drops back, rolling right, throws upfield, caught by Saxon at the 50, 45, 40, down to the 35. Goes Saxon and Thomason bulldogs him there with a headlock. So down he goes at the 35-yard line. The pass completed. San Jose completing again. That is their 21st completion on their 42nd pass. Five, so a 20-yard gain. They have 100 yards plus of offense this half. Another first down in a 13-all ball game. They're set again. Here's the quick pitch. Jackson running right into the short side, hit behind the line, and wrestled down as Ricky Reynolds got there first, and then Marvin Adams and Brian Ford and Dean Tarulia came to help, but it was Ricky Reynolds who got there first. Two men wide side, open side to the left. Back goes Perez now, sets up. Rush from the outside, throws the ball quickly. Left side, Jackson at the 35, and Ronnie Collins got him as he got to the 35, perhaps the 34-yard line of Washington State. Ron Collins up from the secondary. They'll put him down just outside the 34 for a four-yard advance. San Jose just throwing the football. They, they're the team that should use the five-receiver offense. They sure should. John Savage came in from his defensive end that time and put an awful lot of pressure on Perez and a nice defensive play by Ron Collins. He came up there, open field tackle. He really had to do it. He made a very nice open field tackle. So the ball at the 34 and a half yard line at the left hash mark. Open side to the right. One running back behind Perez. Back he goes now. Sets up in the pocket. Throws right side. Great catch. Liggins at the 25 over a defender. And Liggins will take it down to about the 16 yard line. Liggins went over the top of linebacker Dean Tarulia that time to catch that ball high in the air. Fine catch by Liggins, Guy Liggins, and took the ball down to the Cougar 16-yard line. That's an 18-yard gain, another first down, and San Jose State is knocking on the door, threatening to go ahead of this football game. They're well within field goal range, even if the attack bogs down now. Ball on the right hash mark. And time about to run out. I don't think they're going to get another playoff. They're not coming out of the huddle. And time does run out in the third quarter. So at the end of the third period, with Mike Perez leading the way through the air, the San Jose State Spartans are knocking on the door, threatening to go ahead. And the score at the end of three is San Jose State 13, Washington State. by San Jose for a touchdown to Saxon on the right side. From the 16-yard line, they went in a hurry at the start of the fourth quarter. Perez dropped back to the right and threw to James Saxon, his fullback, flaring to the right. He caught the ball at about the five-yard line and dove on into the end zone to score. First play of the fourth quarter, 14.53 to go in the game, and San Jose takes the lead in the football game on a Perez to Saxon forward pass that's covered 16 yards to score. Extra point try now, Sergio Oliveras to kick it. Ball will be held by Perez at the 10-yard line. The lines are set. We are ready. Here's the snap back on the tee. The kick is up. The kick is good. And with that extra point kick, the score becomes San Jose State 20, Washington State 13. 
James Hasty back to receive the kickoff by Olivares. Here's the run forward, the kick, end over end, down toward the corner. Hasty in the end zone, three yards deep, going to return it. Yes, he came out, he hesitated. At the five, now the 10. At the 15, at about the 16-yard line, and Paul Hasty made a bad mistake. He wasn't sure whether to stay or go, and I think maybe he didn't get the kind of help you should have back there. He needed to have somebody come back and tell him whether to stay down, put his knee down, to get the ball out on the 20-yard line. That didn't happen. That young man came back up, formed the wedge, and then took off hasty didn't have any direction he made a mistake washington state at the 17 yard line first down and 10 now down by a touchdown ed blunt sets his team two men left one right no tight end back goes blunt short drop left side pass caught out there on the side by cotton sears fights his way to the 25 and down goes sears after about an eight yard gain Sears the receiver that time on the forward pass by Washington State. So the Cougars, their 20th pass, their 11th completion, and they take the ball eight yards out to the 25-yard line. Second down, two yards to go. We're getting rain, we're getting lightning again, and the lights are on here at Martin Stadium in Pullman on what is now once again a dark, overcast afternoon. Boatman over the ball, Alan Boatman. Split backs, handoff to Kerry Porter, drives it straight in. He's then run back on the play, and Porter's pushed away back to around the 21-yard line. Some helmet banging going on in there by the San Jose State players, all of the Chicago Bears last year, where they congratulate each other with, instead of high fives, banging their foreheads together, but they held Kerry Porter that time to about a yard and so Kerry picks up one to the 26 and it'll be third down and a very very big important yard for Washington State. A wing back or two uh, split men a wing back to the left he'll come in motion through Stallworth to the right side back goes Blunt that's up now he throws over the middle for Chase knocked away incomplete by Rasnick here comes a flag oh and as one of the San Jose players unhappy he caught the flag Kennedy the <laughs> linebacker slapped it down like spiking a volleyball it was in the air on its way to the spot and Kennedy the linebacker reached up and spiked it onto the turf he was so upset at the call as Rasnick came over and around Round Rick Chase to knock that ball down, and they've called him for pass interference. Boy, and here come the Cougars out of the huddle now. Signals called by Ed Blunt at quarterback. Split backs, Broussard and Porter behind him. Broussard right, Porter left. Wide men both ways. Here's the handoff fake. Blunt keeps the ball, runs it up the middle, draw. Breaks it open, 45 at the 50. Running to the outside. They're going to gang him now and try to run him down as he got across midfield. Let's see what they give him on forward progress. It looks like around the 47 or 8-yard line. And Ed Blunt wants to get at Casey Clark now as Clark was the man who just kept the pressure on. And now Broussard is having words with one of the uh, San Jose State defenders as they march back to the uh, scene of the next action. The the live ball spot coming up. That almost looked like a play-action pass that time. Blount dropped back. He was looking for some passing room. He wasn't able to find it. He did the smart thing. He just tucked the pigskin under his hand, took it right up, tried to get outside to pick up some blocking. Fortunately for San Jose State, there was a couple of fellas there to knock him back. Nice run. Good, smart play by Ed Blunt. Nine yards on the play. And now they're holding the spot to take a look. It's maybe closer to 10. They're they're holding the ball over here, it looks like at the 48-yard line, in which case it should be about a yard to go. But, of course, it's always hard to tell with those uh, chains off the sidelines on the far side. I know they put them off the sidelines for safety, but for the broadcaster's standpoint, it is very difficult because you don't get that, uh, you don't have that ability to line them up. They're six feet away from the nearest marker on the far side of the field, and your uh, angles begin to get a little strange. Well, the next officiating meeting, Bob, we'll send you down there and as, as a delegation. You bring that point up, please. Well, Mr. Sorgan bought me my book so I can take my book and go to the meeting. I, I have never, and I've said it so often, I just don't like the chains off the sideline. I, I know it's a safety factor, but from the standpoint of trying to read where the ball is, I don't like it. 13-10 left in the ballgame. Cougars trail 20-13. to Blunt sets him now. Split running backs, Porter and Broussard. Two wide men, Stallworth chase left. Here's the handoff given to Kerry Porter. Bangs in on the left side, and boy, I'll tell you, I don't know if he got it no or not. Way. He didn't have very much to get, but he didn't get very much as he was stopped at the 48-yard line, and that's just a matter of where was the ball when they stopped him. And I think, uh, if anything, he may have lost an inch or two. So it looks like third down coming, and a change now in the defensive front as David Knox, a linebacker from Stockton, comes in and hobbling out, Yepi Pau'u goes to the sideline. He's got a U'u right now. They cannot afford to lose him. He really can play in there, and he's been stuffing that run against Washington State all day long. I'll tell you, time to come right back and run it right back where uh, Pau'u used to be. See what 
Kind of job Mr. Knox can do now. Bet. Kittrick Taylor wide left. Stallworth inside him with Rick Chase out to the right. Split backs behind Blunt. Now the quarterback drops back. Quarterback draw up the middle. It's open this time at the 45. The 40 lost the ball. Scramble for the ball. And let's see who's got it. Looks like Washington State's ball, and that'll be a first down. As the Cougars, Kerry Porter came up with it. Blunt lost it at the 40. Porter recovered it at the 42. But that gain of six is good enough for a first down for Washington State. So the Cougars pick up the first down on a rushing play. That is their fourth on the ground in this ball game. Blunt got hit while he was in the air as one of the defenders ran, Kennedy ran right through the ball. All right, here we go. Quick pass out to the left side to Cotton Sears, and he makes the catch under pressure from Raz. Second down and three at the 35-yard line. Cougars on the march. Signals called by Ed Blunt. Blunt now steps right, keeps the ball. Pitch back to Broussard, running the right side on the option. Not much there as he got around the corner but was dragged down for about a yard gain at around the 34-yard line. Broussard taking it outside. The lead blocker was Chris Dyko, who uh, kind of circled out to the outside, and Broussard cut up inside him that time, and the, spot, the hole wasn't there. I think the hole was a little bit wider with Dyko running the lead, but it's a one-yard gain, and for the Cougars, third down and two now at the 34-yard line. Ball just inside the right hash. They have open side to the left and two receivers. Sears and Stallworth there. Back goes Blunt. Looking left, looking left, throwing deep for Stallworth. He couldn't get it at the goal line. Stallworth at the goal line was covered by Ryan Rasnick again. And that ball was knocked away. So an incomplete pass. And the Cougars are at fourth and two and a crucial play at the 34-yard line. Cougars will go for it on fourth down, down by a touchdown at the 34-yard line of San Jose. Split backs, back to pass Blunt. The rush on, throw left side, overthrown. Meant for Taylor, over his head, covered by cornerback John King, and the ball goes over on the incomplete pass. So San Jose State will take over at the Spartans' own 34-yard line. And the Cougars have still been able to muster only 39 yards of offense in the second half, much of it in that possession, that one drive down the field. So here in the San Jose State Spartans now, 10.36 remaining to play in the game. Next week, Cougars at California, the following week at Arizona State. Here's Perez, quick throw, left side, Malaulu. He runs to the sidelines now, is hit. Krakowski got him and drove him out of bounds. Eight-yard gain, second down, two at the 42, San Jose. High formation, hand to the tailback. Jackson off the right side, got the first down out to the 45 and maybe a little bit more. Kenny Jackson on the carry that time. That's just the tailback blast out of the eye that time. He followed the fullback's lead block, took the ball to the 45-yard line. Three-yard gain for Jackson and a first down for San Jose State. Splitbacks now. They got those elbows up like wings. Signals called again by the quarterback. Here's Perez, fakes the handoff, drops back. Savage chasing, throws right side deep. That is underthrown, incomplete, flag down. There's a flag down back at about the 45-yard line of the Cougars. Could be defensive holding. I don't know. There's another one over at the far side as well. So the officials will gather. We have two flags at different spots now. So let's see what we have. It could be any one of a number of things. Could be ineligible. Could be defensive holding. But we'll wait and see. The referee, John Alderton, will tell us interference offensive against Ooh. San Jose State. Big. Second and 25. Signals called now by Perez. Long way to go. Fakes the handoff, gives it off in the backfield, and up the field comes Jackson. He's over the 40 to the 41-yard line, and Thomason drags him down. Thomason makes the tackle for Washington State in the secondary at the 41-yard line. So an 11-yard pickup that time by Kenny Jackson. Nice play selection that time by San Jose State. They just gave the ball and a quick little dart up the middle. I don't think Washington State's defense was ready for that. Jackson picked up a quick 11 yards. Makes it a little bit easier to come into it instead of third and 25 or third and 14. Yeah, I think it was a good play selection, Paul, because they, they didn't try to get it all back in one grab. They it's realized they probably couldn't. Now they're a little bit closer. Third down, 14 yards to go at the 41. Now they may go for it. Back deep goes Perez. Throws right side. It is caught out there. Liggins battling to try and get away from Artie Holmes. He has a first down, and Holmes finally throws him out of bounds at the Cougar 40-yard line. Behind the quarterback, Perez. Perez with the ball, gives it to him. Jackson off the right side, being pursued by a lineman, Hiller, down to the 30 and close to another first down. 
He is down at the sidelines, dragged down there by Brian Ford and Ricky Reynolds, pursued hard by Chris Hiller at the defensive end, but he got just to the line to gain. The officials now are going to call time, take a look. Nope, they say it's a first down. It's right there. So a 10-yard gain and a first down. Now the huddle come the San Jose State Spartans. They are threatening once again at the Cougar 30. Two backs in running. They're offset. Handoff to the tailback Jackson. He is hit behind the line that time at the 31-yard line. As he tried to slant off the right side, there was nothing there for him. And Dean Terulia led the way for Washington State. Terulia in to make the tackle with that uh, little black beard that he has and the black mustache. They call him the Count. He says that goes back to his high school days. That Don Harney, his high school coach, gave him that nickname uh, in a football game played just before Halloween one year. Oh, no. <laughs> Ball back Probably to the 30. out there or something. I wouldn't be surprised. 31-yard line. Linebackers are noted for all sorts of things, although in those days he was not a linebacker. He was a 175-pound defensive back. And a tough one. Tough one. Ball at the right hash mark on the 31, second and 11. Back goes Perez. Three receivers out. Underneath throw goes for Liggins, but he threw it low. Knee high and a little behind him as Liggins ran left to right along the 28-yard line, and the ball dropped off his fingertips incomplete. That is the 48th pass by unofficial count attempted by San Jose State in the ballgame. Savage goes out of the defensive line for Washington State. That is John Savage, the 6'3", 282-pound freshman from Reardon High in San Francisco. San Jose State's done an excellent job of conversion on third and long. They've always seemed to come up with that key third down and long pass. Let's see if they can do it here. All right, the Cougars ready now. They'll be in their nickel defense with two linebackers. Signals called now by Perez. Back he goes on third, 11. Sets up deep. Good blocking. Now chased out. Got away from one. Throws over the head of Hasty. Ball caught by Malo Ulu and knocked out of bounds at around the 16-yard line. Hasty had taken a sort of a zone position out of the defensive right wing. And that ball was thrown over his head. He went leaping for it. And Malo Ulu, who had broken in between, made the catch. And Terulia is limping off. Just an excellent individual effort by Perez that time. He was forced out of the pocket. Good pressure. Uh, all sorts of different Cougars were in there. They finally got to him, but he Perez floated the ball. Good sense by a quarterback. He floated the ball up over the top, allowed Maula to pull it down for the completion, and again, another key, key long, third and long uh, completion for San Jose State. Time out by the officials as Terulia was still being helped off the field and they were lined up ready to go. So the referee stopped the clock with 7.34 to go. But uh, San Jose State is down there where they could get that two-score lead. I formation, two men to the right. Hand off, Jackson cuts back into the middle, winding it down to the 10-yard line. James Hasty on top of the pile. As the tackle is made by the Washington State defense that time, Mark Ledbetter, young man who was an All-State linebacker at Puyallup, now a lineman, a defensive tackle here at Washington State, but the ball is at the 10-yard line. That is a six-yard gain, and the San Jose State offense has just rolled along for more than 200 yards in the second half. Wide side to the right. Now they'll send a man through in motion to the right. Here's the handoff. Jackson again slams in, takes it down over the 10 to about the 8-yard line. So down to the 8 he goes. Jackson stopped about a yard shy of a first down. See where they spot that ball, changing footballs on every play. They'll put it down just outside the eight for a very short two-yard gain. So now it is third down and a short two to go. They've got to go from just outside the eight to just outside the six. So about two yards to go on third down for San Jose. And this is another of those big plays that we've had in this ballgame. San Jose State's converted on a lot of third and longs. This is a third and short. The way things are going, they're going to be in good shape. They're in the eye now with a tight wing right and two tight ends. Pitch back to the tailback. Jackson left side, got around the corners, got the first down, and out of bounds at the five-yard line. Thomason, Kevin Thomason and Brian Ford ran him out of bounds, but he got to the five-yard line. He did a little fake in and then turned out, and that was what did it. That got him the extra yard he needed for the first down and goal to go. Not only has been Jackson ex excellent in terms of running, he's not fumbled. He puts his hand, both hands, over the ball when he's about to get hit. He's saying, no way am I going to lose this thing. We're going to get a field goal out of this. At the very least, the way they're going, they're going to get a touchdown. San Jose State leads 20 to 13, 609 to go. They have a first and goal at the Washington State five-yard line on the left hash mark. Open side to the right. Tight wing goes to the right. Eye formation. Perez to Jackson, the tailback, slams through behind left guard and tackle and wedged forward for a couple. Chris Hiller led the defensive charge for Washington State. 
Also in there for the Cougars was Jim Krakowski playing at that strong side linebacker as they drove it back. But the forward progress is going to carry down, it looks, to about the three-yard line of Washington State, maybe beyond that. They're going to put it at the two. So a three-yard gain on the play, and it is second down and goal at the two-yard line. Ball still at the left hash mark. Here come the white-shirted San Jose State Spartans out of that huddle. Eye formation, Jackson the tailback. Tight wing to the right, two tight end offense. Here's the pitch back. Jackson hit behind the line, fumbled. Ball is picked up, Washington State ball. You can't run with it with oh. the Cougars it. Jim Hasty got the ball. A great hit off the defensive left side and Jimmy Hasty out of Seattle who attended Central Washington for a time was the man who came up with the ball. He wanted to run with it. Well, of course, he's been playing NAIA ball over at Central. You can run with it over there. But I'll tell you, I don't know who the heck was over there. If it was Ronnie Lee or whoever came off that corner, but that was a great hit. He absolutely destroyed the running back. Here it comes, as we take a look at our replay, and the uh, hit is made. I'm still not sure who it was. It was Lee. Ronnie Lee. Yes, it was Ronnie Lee who made the hit. And the fumble turns it over. That is the first lost fumble in the game. And that is probably the biggest play of the game because San Jose State was going to garner a sure field goal out of the thing. So the Cougars at their own seven, first down. Here's Blunt, quick throw to Porter out on the right side. He is hit at the six-yard line, may have gotten forward to the seven again to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and he has run back. Casey Clark leading the way defensively that time, along with Wayne Woodard. The pass completed by the Cougars, but for no gain on that one. They've done offensively. San Jose has kind of sniffed it out. Rolling left, Blunt throws upfield. Ball caught, 15-yard line, and out of bounds goes Rick Chase for the first down. Check it. Stallworth. It was Stallworth who made the catch. Stallworth to the left side. Took the ball that time out to the 20, to the 19-yard uh, line and out of bounds. A 12-yard Cougar gain and a first down passing on the throw to Stallworth. So the Cougars move the ball through the air. That is their eighth passing first down. They trail 20 to 13. Ready again in a hurry now at the 19. The snap, Blunt rolling right from Trips right. Sets up, throws upfield. Sears caught that one at the 34 and is driven back hard by Casey Clark. Clark is everywhere, but Rick Chase, the senior from Olympia, or check it, uh, Cotton Sears, the senior from Pullman, made the catch and brought the ball to the 34-yard line, a 15-yard gain. Washington State is taking advantage of that rollout. Blunt's able to get around the corner in terms of penetration. He's finding receivers open, and he's delivering an excellent run-pass combination by the Cougar offense so far. Cougars set again, first down at the 34 on the right hash. Quick pitch into the sidelines, running the ball. Now Broussard at the 35-40, spins off a tackler and rolls across the 45 to the 46 yard line there's the bowling ball effect of Steve Broussard as he rolled off a tackler and picked up some extra yardage. First, Cougars out of the huddle, first down at their own 46-yard line, open side to the left. Here's the pitch back to Broussard, running into the sidelines, got just about back to the line of scrimmage before he is necktied and downed by David Knox, the linebacker on the inside, sophomore out of Stockton, California. No gain on the play, ball remains at the Cougar 46-yard line. We are down to 3.51 to play in the game. Paul, earlier I said it seemed the scoreboard clock was standing still. Not anymore. Boy, it's flying right now. Yes, it's, it is. We've been losing minutes hand and fist. They've wound up the rubber band in it now. All right, Cougars ready. Two men wide left. Blunt drops back. Second down. Throws. Ball is incomplete. Or was it? It's yanked away by a defensive back. They're going to rule it incomplete. Pass intended for Victor Wood. He went down. For a moment, it looked like he was going to cover that ball, and then one of the defensive backs, I think it was King, dove in underneath him and almost came up with it. As Wood bobbled the ball, it was in and out of the several sets of hands, and King finally came up with it, but on the bounce. Ryan Rasnick was also there, and so the incomplete Cougar pass stops it with 3.33 to go, but San Jose State leading 20-13. to 13. Over the ball at center now goes Alan Boatman. Blunt with only Kerry Porter running behind him in the backfield. Back pedals, no fake. Rolls out to the right, trying to get to the corner. Throws upfield, diving catch, and a good one by Kittrick Taylor at the 42-yard line. Taylor, a diving catch at the 42 of San Jose. A 12-yard gain for Washington State, first down. Very, very key gain for Washington State. Blunt did a great job of getting outside again. Pressure by San Jose State on that defensive line. He was able to wheel outside. Kittrick saw he was in trouble. He broke the pattern off, got back, picked up the first down. Good 
pass-catch combination again. Key catch. Ball at the 42-yard line of San Jose State now. Cougars on the march. Two men split wide left in man coverage. Rolling left goes Ed Blunt. Sets up. Lobs it deep for Sears. He couldn't get a diving try at the 15-yard line, and it's incomplete. Cotton Sears with a step on Rasnick, the defender on the play, and he went diving for the ball but just could not come up with it. Paul, one thing to keep in mind, if the Cougars take it in and they have 3.05 to go and it's second and 10, they would then have to decide whether to go for the tie or the two for the win. Now, you know what they're going to go for, but it puts a lot of pressure on. It sure does. Washington State's not going to settle for a tie. Jim Walden didn't go for the tie last year against UCLA. They lost that one 31 to 30. There's no way I think they'll go for the tie here. All right, Kittrick Taylor wide left, Tim Stallworth slot left, out to the right, Victor Wood. Broussard, the running back now. Blunt gives to Broussard, pile drives ahead over the 40 down to the 38-yard line. So Steve Broussard on the carry that time, behind the block of Ellen Boatman. The center who wedged somebody out off the line of scrimmage, and Ian Lindner playing at left guard. They move the ball down to the 38 for a four-yard game, third down and six for Washington State, down to 2.44 to go, and the clock is running, and the Cougars are playing it very calmly. They're just going about their business, not hurrying it at all. They're not rushing it anyway. I'm sure they're playing at a, at a rapid clip, but they're not into a panic situation. Porter, the running back. Chase in motion through the formation out to the left side. Rolling left behind Porter's block goes Blunt. Throws it downfield for Sears and overthrew him at the 10-yard line. Sears running that time with King, the cornerback, John King. And the ball was overthrown at the 10-yard line. So the Cougars now have thrown 30 passes in the game, and that makes a total of what? About 79 passes we have had in this game this afternoon, and it is fourth down. Eddie Blunt ready to step in with five seconds on the clock. He's really running it down, almost as if he had the lead. It's at one. He got the snap at zero. Back he goes. He's rushed out of the pocket, breaks up the middle at the 35, fumbled the ball, and the Cougars have recovered for a first down. Holy smokes! Ian Lindner has recovered for a first down. Ian oh, Lindner hold play. everything, hold everything. They may have ruled him down at the 34-yard line. And if so, the ball goes over to San Jose State. And with a change of the ball, it will go to the 35-yard line because it's right in between. Blunt got out of there, was staggering forward. He was down, I think. I think it was a good call, Paul, as the ball came out of there. And uh, Ian Lindner recovered, but the ball at the 34-yard line goes over after the four-yard gain. And so it belongs now to San Jose State with 2.14 to go. I formation, now they're going to run. Hand off to the tailback, takes it one yard to the 35. Just the blast, straight up. Lead back blocking by the fullback, and the tailback, Jackson, takes it to the 35 with two minutes remaining to play. One yard gain. All San Jose State needs to do, Washington State's going to try to get another one here. If they can knock them down for a short gain or anything, they'll call a timeout, try to get it to go third down, have to punt the ball, and they're going to have to go a long way with about 45 seconds to go. Get back they really the will. They've got to get the ball back. There'll be a lot of ball tackling now by the Cougars, four down linemen. Here's uh, the quarterback going to throw to the left side to Malaulu, and he caught it for a gain out to the 36. He's down inbounds, says the referee. One minute, 31 seconds remaining in the ball game. San Jose State with the ball in the 20 to 13 lead. They are at their own 36 yard line. It is third down. Handoff to the tailback, driving it straight up. The lone running back, he didn't get anything that time. Stopped at the 36-yard line, maybe to the 37. It was Jackson again, Kenny Jackson, the tailback. They put him at the 37, no gain. And so now it becomes fourth down. They're letting the clock run as far as they can. It has stopped now momentarily. The Cougars, I think, have taken a timeout is what has happened. They have taken the timeout to stop the clock, and that should be the Cougars' last timeout. So although they'll force the punt here by Tom Deal, they will not have any timeouts remaining when they get the ball back. So watch for the Cougars to come, Paul. Take into account that this is how they lost the game to Oregon on a bad snap on a punt. Oregon recovered it in the end zone and ended up winning the game 21 to 13. So who's to say? Maybe a little deja vu here? And it's the same snapper, Dave, David Diaz Infante, who is snapping for the injured Bill Lehman, who did not make the trip. He's not their normal snapper, and he bounced the ball back last week, and it went by the punter. And some of the folks at San Jose say they thought the deal at least could have stopped the ball, not let it get all the way through to be recovered for a touchdown. I guarantee you that he's thinking about that actual thing, and sometimes the old neck tightens up a little bit, tightens Throw it the over his up. head this time. Oh, just launch it right out of the end zone. That's, go well, ahead, that's what he should have done last week, was kick it out of the end zone for a safety. But it was 12 minutes. 
minutes to go. Here's the snap back. Penalty marker down. They got there and almost got penalty flag flies. Roughing the kicker. Taylor with a fair catch in his own 25. Now let's wait and see what we have. There's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. And there is a flag down for roughing the kicker. Now let's see if they're both against the Cougars or if they offset. That's the question now. If they're both against the Cougars, then San Jose State will have a first down on the roughing call. But on the other hand, if they Legal are... Legal procedure against San Jose way, State. All right, then they'll offset. They'll have to kick it over again. The Cougars will get another shot at trying to block it. Quick thing, Nate brought Kerry Porter right into the middle of the thing. Kerry was the guy that bl blasted right through there, got his hands up, but unfortunately punished the kicker. Now he's got to come back. The center knows that it, there's going to be an awful lot of pressure on him. The kicker knows that these guys are flying after him. I would not want to be in his position right now. No, except I'd rather be in his position ahead by seven than True. perhaps in a tie game or down by one. Does this bring back any memories of Colorado a few years back? Yeah, it certainly does. <laughs> I, exactly. Who was, was, who was, who was that skinny kid? Oh, he, was, he was a stud muffin, <laughs> I'm telling you. He was, he was a muffin anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, was the, that was the Paul Sorensen Memorial football game in Colorado. All right, Cougars 10 on the line. They're coming, no question now. Here's the snap back a little high. He's got it. Gets the kick away. And the kick high, fair catch signal. Taylor retreating to his own 21-yard line. Make it the 22 where he made contact. And the ball goes to the Cougars with one minute and 10 seconds remaining to play. And I think they're going to put the ball down near the 22-yard line for a first down 10. Center fielder is Ryan Rasnick, 15 yards back. Porter out of the backfield in motion. They're quad left. Here's Blunt back, overrun and down at the 15-yard line, and the Cougars have no timeouts remaining. Ed Blunt was overrun by the front defensively that time for San Jose State. In to make the tackle, leading the way, Sam Kennedy. Also, Edwin Bird. Ball is back on the 16-yard line. The Cougars lost six. Second down and 16 with 48 seconds to go. Blunt back, no running backs. Penalty flag flies. Throws it deep for Stallworth. He's got it and dropped it. Incomplete pass. Stallworth caught the ball, leaping at the 45, was hit in the air, and the ball flew away and ruled incomplete. But there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. We have 39 seconds to go on the clock. The clock is now stopped on the penalty call, and the officials have their consultation. And we have a Cougar hurt. Looks like Kittrick Taylor shaken up on the play. Boy. So Taylor, who still has not broken that record officially on punt returns, is down, shaken up. And we have a long discussion amongst the officials on what the flag is about. We've not had a signal as yet. Now John Alderton says offside against San Jose State. Signals called now. Blunt with the ball. No running backs. Back he goes. In the middle. Throws up field. Ball caught by Wood. Bounced off a tackler. Got to about the 39-yard line. That'll stop the clock for the first down. A 13-yard gain to the 39-yard line for Washington State. The Cougars are over 100 yards now in this second half in total offense. 11 passing first downs, 28 seconds to go, clock starts, back goes Blunt, sets up, good protection, now drops out to the left side, winds up, throws up field, it is incomplete, he threw behind Cotton Sears, and may in a sense have been throwing that one away, he may have time running out, back to pass goes Blunt, sets up, lots of time, backs up, throws up field, caught by Sears over midfield to the 45 yard line. Out of the huddle come the Cougars. This is it now as Blunt steps in. He looked back at the clock. Three men right, two split to the left. Back he goes. He sets up. He's going to run it out now to the right side. Sets up. Throws over to the left side. There's a man there, but he underthrew. Cotton Sears, and the ball game is over. And San Jose State in an upset here at Martin Stadium in Pullman has defeated the Washington State Cougars this afternoon. The final score, the San Jose State Spartans 20 and the Washington State Cougars 13. Thank <laughs> you.